Sorry, sorry, I'm a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, I didn't realize uh, as I was, uh, was, uh, was going a bit over the usual time. Hello, everyone. I'm Metis Belaska, and, and welcome to the stream. So, finally, it is time to you know, you know, get back into Persona 4 Arena and, and finish off Yosuke's story. Uh, you, uh, that's been a long time. Uh, 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 that night I ended up putting hang on hold. Like, I think uh, uh, the last stream, uh, one stream I had to cancel. Last stream, in my, uh, last week I did, uh, um, uh, I did, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, hey, you, you, welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, last time um, I did, uh, um, uh, I did uh, D and D. Because uh, uh, I did Chronicles of Mastara because it was the 100 uh, followers special. Uh, but yeah, now it's finally time to get back into uh, Persona 4 Arena and, and, and finish off Yosuke's story. And so let's get to it. Okay, um... That's our recall, we were just on the cusp. Yeah. This is like the very final battle for Yosuke. The corner, I think not! <laughs> and that is the final battle for you, it's okay! <laughs> Labrys has uh, stopped moving and had fallen to the floor. Now she begins standing up, uh, probotically, and jer uh, with jerking motions. She begins speaking in that eerie voice again. Maybe speaking is the wrong word, but it's definitely in my head. My, she was quite easily defeated. Evidently, I didn't push her far enough. Well, she is a test unit, so this is as far as my little game goes. So whoever's voice as this is, is the one controlling Labrys? From the way he was talking, and I could tell now that he wasn't serious. He doesn't comprehend how cruel he's being by controlling her like this. Ah, uh, yes. I have more than enough data now. I should thank you all. Although this didn't work out, you did stay in it to the very end. Labrys's shadow was only the mastermind of the tournament. I see now. You're the true culprit behind the whole thing. It hits me when Karija-san speaks. That's right. Labrys's shadow split off from her after she entered the TV. She merely held the tournament. The shadow couldn't uh, to push Labrys uh, in here. Someone else, the culprit, had, has to exist. Or this incident could never have happened. Stole Labrys away. Since I don't have a persona and can't enter a TV, I needed a puppet that could run amok for me. Labrys's persona was only partially awakened, so I had a feeling her shadow would appear if she underwent a little suffering. You got the better of me this time. You deserve to know at least that much. He admitted it, but his tone was mocking. The culprit is controlling Labrys somehow, no, from a safe. Eh, I have Haven outside of the TV. No way. Labrys for your own selfish reasons? That's horrible. <laughs> has a heart. Do you even know how much pain Labrys went through? Hey Brock, welcome to the stream. How are uh, how was your day? 
and we will uh, we will will meet the uh, 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 the person talking through Labras in the next story. A heart, hmm? meaningless. Whether or not she has one matters not at all to my plan. You bastard! Well then, everyone, until we meet again. The moment the voice stopped, Labras collapses and has onto the ground like a puppet with strings cut. I guess quickly catches her and holds her up. But it looks like you know, she's unconscious. I really hate myself for celebrating that case, uh, that the case was closed just a few moments ago. But I'm really pissed off at whoever was controlling Labras. He knew all you know, about all, all of the uh, that he, uh, but he, he still manipulated Labrys's heart to do this to her. I'm so angry. I clench my fist so firmly that my nails are digging into my palms. Karija san, uh, uh, san speaks from behind me. It seems whoever our adversary is, they're connected to us. I advise you not to get involved in this matter any further. From here on, you should leave this to us. Huh? Are you telling us to back off from this? Like I can do that. Whoever's behind us knows what Labra has had to go uh, through in her past. No, not just the past. He knew what would happen if uh, she was pushed into the TV world. And on top of that, the instant he figured out his plan had failed, he came and controlled her directly to turn, her, uh, to turn us against her. It's like we're his toys. I'm not letting him get away with that. I understand how you feel, but this is too dangerous for you. We will do our best to ensure that no harm comes to you. Trust in us and let us work. Come on, we've been involved this far. Uh, you think we're just gonna uh, shut up uh, and watch you handle everything? She, uh, she's probably saying that for our sakes, but how can we live with uh, ourselves if we do, you know, if, uh, if they do all the fighting for us? No way, I can't let that happen. I open my mouth to really tell her off. But you speaks first. Guys, let's leave this to them. Huh? Are you serious? Look at yourself, Yosuke. You can barely stand. So he noticed. He was right. After all the fighting I've done today, I'm really beat. I'm sure everyone else is tired too after being stuck in this world for so long. Yosuke, let's go back. You're staring at me. Oh, I get it. Thank you for your understanding. Don't worry, we'll keep you safe. I'm sorry, Hanamura-san. I just uh, bow as apologetically. We all uh, look. Uh, we all look glum, but none of us uh, subject. After all, we know that they aren't doing this out of spite. But this is the last we'll see of. But is this the last we'll see of Labrys? I peek at her face as she lies in in Agus's arms. Of course, since she's unconscious, I can't talk with her. We thank Rijo San and return to our world with heavy hearts. After returning from the TV, we gathered uh, uh, at the food court, but we didn't uh, really talk much. We split up uh, not long afterwards. After all, we were all pretty damn tired. Heck, Chi and Rise, uh, Chi and Rise may, may put their heads on the table and fell asleep. <laughs> I mean, I can understand Rise, but Chi... <laughs> I didn't feel like stopping by anywhere, so I went straight home. And the last thing I could remember was being told dinner was, uh, was almost ready. The instant I reached my room, I lost consciousness. And then... Loud and you know, electronics beeps bring me back in, uh, into wakeful, uh, wakefulness. I reached out for my alarm um, clock, but I realized uh, that the beeping isn't my alarm. It's my cell phone me this early damn it i plugged it in and, and now i can't reach it while i'm lying down <laughs> uh, i rub my eyes tiredly and, and get up to grab the phone 
The caller is a number I don't know. Hello? Huh? I jolt wide awake. The speaker on the line is someone I never expected to hear from. I take a minute to fix my hair and make, make a mad dash for the uh, place the, to the caller told me to go. When I reach the designated location, there's uh, something that looks completely out of place is here in the countryside. A limo. Holy crap, that's long. It was so long, I thought I was seeing things. Yeah, this is definitely no place for a car this awesome. <laughs> oh, there he is. What took you so long? <laughs> it looks like everybody else is already here. I ran so hard I almost barfed, but I finally made it. And the others were just about to leave. Oh, I made it in time. <laughs> I'm glad I could see you before I left. That's right. Labrus is the one uh, that had uh, that had called. She wanted to say goodbye uh, before uh, she leaves Inaba. How can I refuse that? Still, I never thought uh, uh, one of them, Labrus especially, uh, I never thought one of them, Labrus especially, would call me. Yeah, I think I mentioned this before, but uh, people often ship up Labrus with either Teddy or, um, or Yosuke. I never really saw it before, but I can kind of see why. <laughs> Huh? Wait a second. Did I tell you my cell phone number? Obtaining the cell phone numbers of ordinary <laughs> citizens is child's play. <laughs> we just invaded your privacy. Don't think about it. <laughs> Wait, what? Holy shit, really? Are you accessing that server thing you mentioned? The Kirijo group is kind of scary. <laughs> I asked if I could come see everyone. I wanted to give everyone a real goodbye. Labrus looks down bashfully as she speaks. I guess and Kirijo uh, Sano watching uh, her from um, the limbo, uh, the limo with smiles on their faces. Man, is this a this, is this a relief? So Labrus can do thing things that uh, she wants to. I'm glad she's in a group that lets her have freedom. She really does. Uh, she really does have a place to belong. What will you do now? Are you going back to that lab? No. I decided I'm gonna work with Mitsuru-san and them. I want to do my damnedest to catch whoever used me to bait a trap for you all. There's no hesitation in her eye uh, as, as her strong will glare, uh, glares out. I see. She found uh, what uh, she want. Uh, she found what she wants to. Sounds like you're ahead of the game. I'm reminded of the blank and career uh, uh, choice paper still uh, tucked away in my desk. That sense of haste without direction. The need to keep up appearances. I didn't want to handle that. But maybe it is time to face my future. Oh, I'll write uh, down a big dream. <laughs> oh, just talking to myself. I'll let you know when everything's been decided. Um, okay. Just make sure you tell me, okay? Labrys answers uh, my smile with one of her own. Then she stretches out her hand. I take a closer look at them. They're quite uh, uh, delicate. I grab her hand and lift it uh, above her head. A handshake is so formal. I'll show you what the cool kids do. <laughs> you mean what? Uh, uh, you mean the twenty or, uh, uh, or so year old thing that cool kids have been doing? <laughs> I use my uh, uh, a hand to open hers. Lavras looks confused, but she lets me move her, her hand around. Um, like this? <laughs> yep, that's it. Here we go. The clap of her high five uh, echoes uh, through the clear May sky. Not to be outdone and by me, Chie, uh, uh, Chie, uh, Rise, and the rest give Labras high fives too. Thank you so much, Yosuke Kun. I won't forget about you. <laughs> I'm friends with you now, so I'll stay strong. Uh, 
Labyrinth begins to tear up, and, and to hide it, she hurries into the limo. Soon after, the limo begins moving quietly down the road. Labyrinth waves to us inside the car. Even after the car has gone pretty far, I can still see her waving from inside. She's still waving. Whoa, she's still waving! <laughs> Everyone starts to laugh a little. Can she see us? <laughs> I mean, I imagine telescopic vision is kind of a feature for anti-shadow weapons. I barely make out the, the car. I can barely make out the car from here. After parting with Labrys, we all ended up hanging out at, uh, uh, at the Junas food court. That's right. It's the welcome back party for you uh, we'd completely forgotten about. We finally can get back to business to defeat the Huns. But still, no, no it feels kind of weird uh, having uh, a welcome party after saying goodbye hey, to someone. Come on, let's hurry up and do a toast. I only get a 30 minute break. Huh? Are you working today? I can't take much time off during Golden Week. Teddy, you were out without permission a couple days ago, so be ready to pay the price. Yeah, shout out to everyone and and, and, and like serve it uh, uh, and like yeah, serve it. Uh, um, uh, actually, I should expand on that because it's not just in service. Everyone who has to work uh, over the holidays, because not everyone gets uh, its time off uh, uh, over the holidays. No, but that wasn't my fault. You jerk. <laughs> Nurse lover! <laughs> oh, speaking of which. Shh, quiet, you! <laughs> How did the, the conversation go from working to wanking in two moves? Jesus. I don't need them knowing this stuff. There's no time. Before anyone can ask you what he's talking about, I raise my cup and look at everyone. After a toast, we all uh, chat like we don't uh, have a care in the world. <laughs> this is the kind of atmosphere you can only get uh, with the best of friends. But actually, that's not all. We aren't about to let uh, things end the way they did. Ahem. May I have your attention, please? It's time to announce the reason we're all here today. Isn't it to welcome back Yukon? You and I trade glances. Uh, you and I trade glances at uh, Yukiko's question. I can see in my partner's eyes that he wants me to do all the talking. You see, we're already. Uh, you see, we've already talked this out. And now, uh, uh, and now's the time to bring it up. It's about yesterday's incident. You guys weren't satisfied with how things ended, right? Of course not. But so, why not launch our own investigation? Does that mean? That's right. The investigation team is back in action. Oh, ho, ho, now you're talking. And boy, is that going to go places where we finally reach the next story. Wait a moment. I thought we were going to leave this to the Kirijo group. <laughs> Did I say we wouldn't get involved? That's right. He only said leave this to them. Oh, you're right. Actually, my partner here brought it up first. Though I'm with him a hundred percent. Now that's our sensei. Yukiko and Teddy jump uh, right on board. On the other hand, we're actually uh, uh, we're actually sensible. Uh, uh, well, uh, bleh. on the other hand, the uh, the we're actually the sensible team of Chie, Rise, and Noyoto are sitting with their mouths wide open. <laughs> You're splitting hairs rather finely there. <laughs> it seems that uh, she was definitely not expecting uh, you to use his weasel logic like this. But no matter how no I uh, but no matter how I think about it, I can't let this go. After all, uh, after all we've been through, the villain uh, is out uh, there waiting for another chance. 
I egg her on, and though she looks hesitant at first, uh, and bleh, I egg her on, and though she looks hesitant at first, she smiles fearlessly. Of course I am. I like that smile. That's what a, a reliable detective. That's what a reliable detective should look like. I so. All right then. Let's find the real culprit. Yeah! Everyone's hands pile uh, up the uh, at the middle of uh, uh, at the middle of the table. Friends are really what uh, you need. Whoa! It's already this late. I look at everybody smiling, and though I'm reluctant to go, I stand up. Well, I gotta get back to work. Come on, Teddy, let's go. Who's this Teddy you speak of? I don't know anyone with such a pretty name. <laughs> Good lord. You got some nerve trying that on me. <laughs> Sounds like someone wants me to make his next shift a living hell. <laughs> Teddy claps uh, Sue's hand and promises uh, to, uh, to visit the, the Dojimo uh, household tonight. See, it's just this one night, he says. That Teddy doesn't uh, don't cause uh, Dojima-san any trouble. But well, I know the feeling. I never feel like uh, break time is long enough either. But you know why I keep my cool. Uh, uh, but you know why I'm keeping my cool right now. I begged my dad to give Teddy and me, me tomorrow off. I just haven't told him yet, that sucker. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can't let uh, this end here. It's still Golden Week. We drop. This time, for sure. And at last, Josuke's story ends. Okay, so... Oh! Looks like I can go with my original plan after all. I was originally going to go with Teddy Neck. Uh, uh, oh, no. No, um... No, no, no. That does seem to the, uh, be the plan. My my original plan was to go with the uh, uh, was to alternate uh, between Persona Three and Persona Four characters. But I just finished the Persona Cor Four character, and and it's a kind of an even. So I'm going to use Teddy as sort of the uh, uh, an in between character uh, and character. Oh no, no, not Teddy, not Teddy, Naoto, because she's in both uh, uh, she's in both stories. What follows are my impressions of the organization called the Shadow Operatives, as well as their leader Mitsuru Kirijo. My fingers fly across the keyboard. My last case was special. I need to complete my report before I can forget my important details. My name is Nayoto Shiragane. I'm a detective. The Shiragane family has been uh, working as detectives for generations. Though I'm, I'm young and, and still in high school, I have been given the opportunity to take on several cases and have built up experience as a detective. Oh, by the way, a interesting fact. Uh, this act, uh, this actually had a bit of an, uh, this character actually had a bit of an influence on, um, uh, on Arc System Works who developed the, to this game. And, and they actually brought in a character, or, um, uh, a character in Blaze Blue called uh, Naoto, uh, Naoto Kurogane. <clears throat> Though, as, uh, as I understand it, he has no, uh, um, uh, um, there's, there's no, no, he has no uh, connection to this Naoto in any way. 
<laughs> like he just had, uh, he just has a similar name. That's all. My work has, uh, has earned me some trust. Uh, as every uh, so often, the police will come to me for uh, my uh, assistance. That's where the story begins. A sudden request uh, st from the Inaba Police Department. That was about a month ago, early April. Last summer, I had uh, received a request from um, the prefectural police to come uh, to the town uh, of Inaba. The b a bizarre series of murders was occurring, and a corpse uh, would turn up, uh, up every morning after a, uh, a fog uh, after a foggy night. In the end, it turned out to be one of the most difficult cases of my career. It's been uh, about two weeks since the last case was closed. No, from the public's viewpoint, four months have passed and, and the crimes were stopped. The culprit has been arrested and prosecuted. Uh, peace has, has returned, but with, uh, but with it comes um, a depressing proposition. I'm not unwilling to help uh, the police again, but... My involvement with the previous case is not something I'd like to go through again. To be completely honest, that particular case was no simple series of murders. During the course of my investigation, I obtained a supernatural power known as, as my persona, making me more than uh, just a detective. I collaborated with other persona users and became directly involved with the series uh, with, uh, uh, with the events of the case. Of course, if I was to tell the, uh, to the police, it would be treated as nonsense. Worst case scenario, I'd be discredited. Having to leave out uh, uh, those details while explaining the events of the case is more than a little nerve-wracking and, and, uh, and feels like lying, but there you have it. While on my way to the police department for the uh, case, I go through a list of possible uh, questions and, an uh, and answers I may would need. Something's different today, though. After greeting the receptionist, I'm not uh, uh, I'm not led to the usual dull me uh, dull meeting room. Instead, I'm taken uh, to the reception area on the top floor. A leather uh, trimmed sofa, uh, a wooden uh, a leather bleh. excuse me, a leather trimmed sofa. Uh, a curved wooden uh, table, a nouveau uh, re uh, a nouveau riche setting. <sighs> Looks like this may take some time. If this was going uh, to be paperwork and basic questioning, they wouldn't have brought uh, me into the special room. Is it a, a new case? I have to wait several minutes before uh, someone comes um, to speak with me. When the door finally opened, and a man wearing a uh, suit not fitting of the uniform of a local officer walks in. Sorry about the wait. He hands me his card. Yeah, I don't think we met. I don't believe we met this guy yet. At, at um, I think he only appeared uh, in two story. He's this one in Mitsuru's. Allow me to introduce myself. His card is uh, and has a lengthy title. Uh, title: Nationally, uh, National Police Agency Security Bureau, uh, Bureau Security Planning Division. I was shocked. They're more commonly known as the Public Safety Police. The Security Planning Division uh, Division is the uh, is the command center of the departments that handle terrorist threats, coup d'état plots, and foreign affairs. The secret police is also be uh, belong to this group. But why would it, uh, a person of such importance come all the way to, uh, to a, ru uh, a rural locale like this? I look him in the eyes. He appears to be uh, measuring me up. I see you're enough on the ball that you don't need a lengthy introduction. Good. Without any further talk, the man gets to his point. Have you heard of the Kirijo group? I doubt there are many who haven't. I'll get right to the point. 
We'd like to hire you to perform a Sub Rosa investigation on them. That's a term I never heard before, Sub Rosa. You need a corporation quietly investigated. Why me? I don't see what I can do that your own department cannot. I would agree if shadows and personas weren't involved. Yeah, for anyone who's not familiar with the series, the whole deal with shadows and personas is kind of a secret. It's not exactly widely known. This time I'm unable to hide my surprise. But the man continues, either failing to see me or purposefully, uh, or purposefully ignoring my reaction. Summer 12 years ago, there was an explosion at the Kirijo-owned Tatsumi Port Island, killing over 50 people. Which was a plot point to Persona 3. You would have been very young at the time. By the way, information leak, there's a remake coming out. I am super psyched for that. I've reviewed that case. The official explanation was that a gas main leaked during a construction project. Afterwards, though, a bizarre rumor saw quite a bit of circulation. The mass media noticed that there was a suspiciously large number of researchers amongst the casualties. They floated the theory that the official explanation was a lie, and that the explosion was really caused by some dubious experiment. Surely not! No concrete evidence was ever found to support those claims, though. As I recall, the matter was left unsettled. Some may still remember the incident, though I don't think many could recall the finer points. Those rumors were all true. His voice becomes firm. Those researchers under Koetsu Kirijo, the old Kirijo group manager, were working on harnessing the power of shadows. The experiment went awry, and they lost control of the shadows. That's what caused the explosion. Experiments using shadows? They lost control? Are you saying the shadows flooded the city? The real world? I can't speak to that. There was no way of getting hard answers back then. No one took the spooky story seriously. Not to mention they did more than, than just flood the city. <laughs> they friggin' altered time and space. But that accident got the government and the police's attention. Though, they didn't launch an investigation until a year or two ago. That couldn't be helped. Law can only preside over the, uh, the world as we know it. Things that can't be explained can't be governed. Only those in the Kirijo group know exactly what happened and how much of the aftermath was dealt with. The aftermath? The world, uh, the world has a bad ring to it. It brings to mind a cover-up of some dark secret. Their cleanup efforts continued until quite recently. They were using some method known only to them, entirely behind our backs. We think they've been conducting illegal activities in the ten years since then, while hiding behind their cleanup efforts. I don't think that was ever confirmed. I mean, we know Mitsuru's grand, uh, uh, grandpa was a jackass, and her father was actually a decent guy. <laughs> but I imagine the cleanup efforts were due to Mitsuru's father. Though, admittedly, some shady stuff did kind of happen, and... Um, uh, uh, did kind of happen uh, during uh, uh, um, his time um, um, as head of the company. And you wish for me to confirm this. Not only do you have a relationship with us, you have a persona and extensive experience in the field. We can't think of a better candidate. And since I'm not directly affiliated with the police, if I were to be caught in a trap, it wouldn't lead back to you. If that's the way you want to put it. My reply was meant to be sarcastic, but uh, this conversation is, excep uh, is exceptionally drain uh, draining. I must applaud public safety. They know everything about anybody they choose to investigate. There's no point in trying to bargain with them. He continues exp uh, exp explaining uh, indifferently, as if uh, able uh, to sense my uh, resignation. 
Last year, in conjunction with the Kirijo Group, we established an unofficial department in the force, nicknamed the Shadow Operatives. I just love that this whole uh, uh, that there uh, is that the, the, this is such a badass silhouette pick, and then you take a look at uh, the at the uh, one that's obviously Junpei, and he's slouching like hell. <laughs> It's a special unit capable of dealing with shadow-related cases. This is news to my ears. That's a rather bold move. You went so far as to join forces with the ones you suspect of illicit activities? That's exactly why we did it. We must keep a leash on them by integrating them into the system. But the police are far behind information-wise. Officially, you are higher on the chain of command, but less so in practice. I try throwing out a theory as I begin to get a grasp on what's taking place. The man didn't so much as flinch, but he didn't give me the much of an answer either. You need some leverage to keep your hold on them. Thus, this secret investigation. What exactly do you want me to do? That will depend on your answer. So that's their game plan. I figured as much. An organization as big as the Kirijo Group is hiding in the secret uh, about shadows. Now, should I take the job or not? As a person with persona abilities, I nat I'm naturally interested in learning how much uh, is known about shadows. But this job couldn't potentially uh, could potentially give me le uh, give me leverage over the government in the future. While I'm deep in thoughts, the man continued as, as, as if he can read my mind. If you think we're hiring you to further our organization, you're mistaken. I can't help but look, at, uh, uh, look up, uh, up at the obvious change in his tone. Our sources say it's possible that they've been talking students from Makirijo owned school into doing their dirty work. <laughs> Not exactly wrong! They've been pleading ignorance while making ordinary kids clean up whatever messes they've left. I mean, kinda, but kinda not. And that, we don't forgive. We're supposed to be upholding the law. We can't overlook things like this. Well, you gotta give him this. He's an honest guy. He's surprisingly sincere. He's staring right at me. Unlike before, his eyes are strong and bold. He truly doesn't want anyone innocent to suffer. Of course, they could, this could be an act to convince me, but even then, I do agree with that, option, with that opinion. All that remains is to find out Carrillo's intentions. In that case, I accept. Though I don't plan on abandoning my school life here. I'll do what I can to help, but only within those limits. I would never have dictated conditions like this before. The reason I had come uh, to this town and transferred uh, to Yasagami High School was uh, for my uh, investigation. But the school life uh, and, uh, uh, and the dear friends uh, that I've gained have uh, become irreplaceable, uh, irreplaceable to me. It may sound childish uh, to be... Uh, to be uh, bleh. It may sound childish to demand uh, that uh, I stay with my friends, but if they refuse uh, to budge in that uh, regard, that's that. However, fine with us. he accepts my, uh, my condition almost too easily, then immediately begins to explain the details of the case. At the end of this month, the Kirijo group is airlifting some special cargo. Kirijo has asked our help in making sure the cargo is transported safely. That would be uh, that would be the transport of Labrys. We'd like you to accompany them as a police observer. What do they mean, transported safely? A police escort, assurance of no public investigation if any unforeseen situation were to arise, things like that. Of course, if anything does happen, we will hold them responsible. And what is this special cargo? It's something to do with the shadow research. They've admitted that much, but we don't know the exact details. According to our research, it's most likely something from the old ergonomics research laboratory, classified as risk level four. In other words, even though it's sealed up tight, it's extremely dangerous. They even have, have a risk scale for things like this. 
It seems like you know, his, his research, uh, research goes into a variety of different things. As I'm thinking, the man slides a photograph to me. It's a beautiful young lady. Her eyes show strong will, uh, as striking as, as her blazing red hair. That hair reminds me of something. I may have seen her picture while going in through the documents regarding the, por uh, the Port Island incident. Of course, the girl in those, in those pictures was much younger. This woman will be on that flight. Her name is Mitsuru Kirijo. Kirijo. She's the oldest daughter of the Kirijo family, Koetsu Kirijo's granddaughter. It was he who devised the experiments 12 years ago. And I don't think I've stressed enough over the, the course of the series that I hate Koetsu. That should have been uh, 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 that should have been easily apparent from Labrys's story. You should know that she's also a powerful <laughs> persona user. A persona user besides us. I was suspecting something like this, but to hear it uh, out loud is still shocking. So there are Persona users other than, uh, than those involved in the case last year. She took the lead in gathering students three years ago when she was still in high school. We'd like you to first go to her residence and meet with her. All right. I'm sure you figured out by now, since she's a high-ranking Kirijo Group official and a Persona user, but she's a shadow operative. She's member number one, the general manager. And not because she's a Kirijo but because she has the abilities to back it up. Yeah, like, no kidding. And, like, for anyone not in the know, Personas have the, um... Uh, personas is, um, generally lean towards support or combat. Mitsurus can do both. Though it specializes more in combat. Can you do this? If she's dirty, then this won't be easy for you. I already accepted your assignment, so I must simply make the best of it. I offer my hand. He has the firm grip of uh, someone who's working on the front lines of the law. A few days later, I receive a message informing me of that transport. Uh, that uh, the transport is to be on, uh, on the first of May. It's on a school day, but since I've taken the job, there's nothing I can do about it. In fact, I should be glad that this didn't overlap uh, with the extended holiday. I haven't heard the details, but I expected, uh, uh, but I expect to have some important uh, arrangements during jo uh, Golden Week. Arrangements to reunite with my upperclassman Yu Narukami, who was the leader of our group uh, during last year's incident. I keep thinking about our reunion. It's only been two weeks since he uh, left, but it feels much longer. I suppose that goes to show how much uh, I'm looking forward to it. But I'm going off track. I need to think about my new job, so I hastily pull myself together. Why am I at zero frames? All right, it's, am I being seen? Yeah, I'm seeing it on my end. Sorry about that, guys. I have to use a relay in order uh, to um, in order uh, to you know, um, to watch uh, uh, in order to uh, to stream uh, because Twitch isn't uh, very kind to the. You know, um, uh, to streamers in my country. And this seems, uh, to, be, uh, 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 this seems to happen every, uh, uh, every now and then, especially around this time. May 1st. The cargo is due to, the, uh, uh, to be transported from um, the laboratory near Carrijo Mansion. I make my way to the mansion uh, to present myself and end up occupying uh, and end up accompanying, uh, accompanying the security detail. The limousine is incredibly long. 
Apparently, it, it isn't until that rare for the upperclassmen in other countries to ride in cars this large, but it's downright comical on the tiny roads of Japan. That was uh, is where I met uh, uh, Mitsuru Kurijo in person. Nice to meet you. My name is Naoto Shiragane. I'll be acting as an observer today. I've been told about you. It's nice meeting you as well. I'm Mitsuru Kurijo. I was going to make a comment about uh, two new... Uh, uh, two members of the same arcana uh, meeting each other, but no, that's not right. Mitsuru is of the Empress, and I believe if, um, I believe Naoto's of the Wheel of Fortune. Her beauty is enough to attract uh, to attract anyone's attention. She was so much uh, less imposing. Uh, 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 she was so much less imposing than and in the picture. I didn't expect the police's observer to be so young. Does that bother you? Uh, no, I didn't mean to downplay your abilities. Forgive me. I take a look at Kurijo-san's face. She's the only daughter of the founding family, but it's been two years since and, and she renounced the practice of the Kurijo co uh, group being run by the family. In other words, she's simply the CEO's daughter now, not the heir to the company. She must be the used to constant stress, being a female leader at uh, such a young age. Getting people uh, to acknowledge uh, her must have uh, been a struggle. I don't need to mince my words in dealing uh, with types like her. I decide to cut to the chase. Me, what are the contents of your cargo? I'm ashamed to have to admit this. But since the original researchers have passed away, we don't know what's in it either. We can't allow the worst case scenario for such an item to come to pass in the middle of a city. That's why we plan to transfer these items to a distant facility according to their indicated risk level. A natural decision. Her posture, her actions, if that was all an act, I must uh, commend her for her ability to deal uh, with the unexpected. But personally, my impression is that uh, she's a trustworthy person. Before, uh, before leaving, I had a chance to see the, the Kurijo mansion. I have to say, it's surprisingly simple. It felt uh, t as though uh, you know, it was a uh, prioritizing thing, function and efficiency over meaningless luxury, perhaps a reflection of her own personality. At any rate, her intelligence and presence are proof enough of her upbringing. If she was hiding something, it would be hard to figure out. Then I'll stay near the cargo along with the police escort. I'll contact you immediately if anything happens. All right. If anything is unclear to you, feel free to ask me. Her eyes look straight at me, and I feel like uh, she could uh, see through. Uh, uh, she could see through anything. I end up. Uh, I end our conversation sort. Bleh. I end our conversation short, uh, shortly after and quietly wait for us to arrive. The limousine transport truck and multiple security cars reach the airport uh, without any incident. The cargo uh, may be dangerous, but according to the records, it was kept safely in storage for the past 10 years. Plus, it's worthless to the average person. Because of this, the people involved in security don't look tense. Krijo san hands her uh, servant and her travel bag. It's almost, as if, uh, it's almost as if she's simply going on vacation. The plane's destination is one of the southern, uh, of the southern islands. I'm sure uh, it'd be fun uh, to go with everyone. Uh, okay, for uh, everyone, uh, what do you mean controller has been disconnected? For everyone who, uh, uh, for anyone who's not uh, familiar with Persona Three, Yakushima was the name of the island that uh, that, um, that the P3 gang went uh, to for summer break. And that's where they name name at Igus. Uh, excuse me.
Why isn't it turning on? What? That was weird. Just for some reason, and and my the screen turned off. I thought uh, the um, I thought the plug uh, got uh, uh, got loose, but no. Apparently, the the switch was, uh, was just enough off uh, the on setting to turn it off. But yeah, uh, 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 Yakushima was where they met, I guess. I'm sure it'd be fun to go you know, with everyone. What the? I realize uh, is what I'm, I'm thinking, and I have to laugh and have to laugh to myself. A year ago, no, I would not have. Uh, I would have considered uh, uh, that it would be fun uh, to spend some. I would never have uh, discover, uh, discovered it would... Bleh. A year ago, I would never have uh, considered uh, that it would be fun to spend time with others. But I can't help but think that way now. Soon they will begin moving uh, the cargo uh, out of, 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 of the truck. I hear my mind of day... Uh, I clear my mind of daydreams and look back to the truck. They pass through the gate needs for uh, large cargo shipments. The shipment uh, is, an, is an imposing metal cases, uh, but uh, among all, all other shipping containers, it doesn't attract uh, much attention and, and from and the airport staff. It's not long before the final case is unloaded from the truck. It's obviously different from the rest. It's covered in, in what seems to be heavy industrial grade steel. About a meter wide and, and broad, uh, and broad, and, and two and a half meters tall. Seems like something very special is in, in there. But even if someone was targeting the shipment, it would be impossible to steal that. Four men in suits slowly tip uh, the case sideways and place it on the cart. Seeing it on its side reminds me of something. It looks like a coffin. The moment I, the moment I realize that, a shiver runs down my spine. Hmm, it does bring enough... Uh, it does look big enough for a person to lie down on in. Could there really be someone inside? Could it be that this tight security is not to prevent theft? but to keep the cargo from escaping? Now, how can I imagine uh, things like, like this without any proof? I shake my head uh, to clear uh, of these pointless thoughts. Am I just shaken because I heard this as something, uh, because I heard this has something to do with shadows? Eventually, the check-in process is completed and the announcement uh, to, uh, uh, to begin boarding uh, echoes uh, through the airport. I relaxed a little, relieved that nothing has happened at, uh, up to this point. Once the plane takes off, the only thing in our way is the sky. I had to put on an, an earpiece uh, tuned uh, to the police radio to keep up with the current situation. So far, nothing was out of the ordinary. Kregis on uh, its group finished checking, uh, finished checking in and had boarded the plane. The cargo should be loaded soon. After I supervise that, I check in and suddenly an urgent voice jumps onto the broadcast. Squawk code has changed to 7500. 7500. 
I have trouble mentally shifting gears after uh, the long period of inactivity. I never imagined I would hear that number in my own with my own ears. A hijacking? Yep. Is the plane I'm investigating being hijacked? That can't be a coincidence. Could this have been a setup by uh, the police or the Kurija group? No, there's no different. Uh, uh, there's no benefit uh, for either of them to get involved uh, with the general public. So if that's Is the case, the, they want? <laughs> there really is someone after the cargo. Uh, the cargo. Wait, if they're after the cargo, why hijack the plane? If they're not trying to steal the cargo, uh, uh, could they be after Kurijo san No, that doesn't feel right. Hijacking isn't an efficient method uh, to carry out a kidnapping or an assassination. Yeah, uh, uh, a hijacking is pretty public. If they have the time uh, and, and the resolve to pull this off, they would be far better off uh, trying uh, to take uh, go over the plane in, in mid-flight. I can't figure out their objective. Why would they do something that attract uh, so much attention? Attention. This is a very uh, peculiar time to attempt to take uh, over uh, the airplane. Very peculiar indeed. Hijacking before uh, departure forfeits the biggest benefit of hijacking. But at the same time, all normal airport operations will come to a halt while everyone turns their focus on the plane in question. Ah, the airport, uh, the airport will naturally stop uploading luggage, uh, luggage onto the plane while the hijacking goes on. It's the perfect distraction. So they are after the cargo. If that was the case, the hijacking is only a decoy. But would they really risk their lives hijacking a plane over one piece of cargo? As I think, I scanned the area uh, from my viewpoint and up, uh, up in the boarding area. I see a van that had uh, been um, parked near the cargo you know, area uh, uh, suddenly peel out. You know, out. A, suspi a, 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 bleh, a suspicious departure at this time? I, I have a bad feeling about this. But the cargo was just unloaded right in front of my eyes. I didn't see anyone steal it. Hold on. The four men in suits with the handcart. I don't see them. I lost track of them in the rush of activity after the hijack call. I grind my teeth and interrupt the radio call. Zero two over. A suspicious vehicle is leaving the scene. Stay in pursuit. It's a large vehicle, about two tons. License plate. <laughs> I hear someone confirming with Roger, but they're uh, uh, but they're shouting and and confusion going on in the background. Unsure if my intentions have been understood. I run across the airport by myself. I need to grab hold of these people's tail, if only to get at a few hairs. Of course, there's no way I can catch a vehicle on foot, but I have a plan. I run down the escalator and bolt for the passenger pickup area at the arrivals lobby. I look you know, like around outside and there it is, just as I thought. The suspicious vehicle no, no, was coming this way. The airport's road layout no, is a loop. After leaving the, uh, the departure lobby, cars must uh, take a turn and curve uh, back around uh, to the arrival lobby before being able to reach uh, the, uh, the surface streets. I hide in the crowd and wait. I hide in the crowd and wait for the van to get close. And as it passes by, I throw a small, uh, sticky lump. Luckily for me, it strikes and sticks low on the van inside. There's a compact tracker in there. You'd have enough to be pretty close to pick up uh, the signal, but it's better than nothing. I take my hat off and wipe my forehead. The pedestal all around uh, me began. Uh, uh, the pedestal uh, around me begins uh, to stir. Uh, the pedestrians around me uh, begin to stir. Pedestals, what? <laughs> Everyone stop. Uh, uh, darn it. Um.
Everyone stopped the apps and stared at their smartphones. I didn't need to look, I knew. The first news of the hijacking is hitting the media. I put my hat back on and pulled all the brim low. I'll have to be careful not to let all the information uh, flying about confuse me. I keep my guard up as I quickly walk back uh, to, the, uh, to the departure lobby. Another 45 minutes pass without any uh, more clear uh, information coming through. There's chaos on the radio and people are, are, in are in a panic. But after an hour, the confusion suddenly stops and a shocking report comes in. They dealt with it so soon? <laughs> Thanks to P3 Best Girl! Though some passengers were ill, no, there were no casualties. As far as I know, the hijackers didn't even make any demands. It's hard to think that the police could have negotiated with them. But on the other hand, there's no indication that uh, the special assault team had stormed the plane. Did the group surrender now that uh, their decoy objective uh, was complete? What's going on here? Just then, a radio call came in directly for me. Over. The hijacking has been dealt with, but the transfer must be cancelled. The whereabouts of one piece of cargo cannot be confirmed. All indications are that it has been stolen. Then that vehicle earlier. Are you still in pursuit? We're tracking it through the end system. Head to the guest room immediately so we can discuss our response. It looks like my call to report that that suspicious van had not been a mistake. Understood. Soon after, the involved parties were gathered in the conference room. Rijosan and the police are talking hurriedly. A good number of uh, this quickly may put uh, to, uh, a good number of this quickly put together team are not aware of uh, the comp. Uh, uh, of the confidential nature of this matter. I imagine things won't be proceeding so smoothly. And uh, at any rate, the van on uh, the run can be tracked through the end system. The hijackers were handed uh, uh, over to the airport police, while those of us who knew the truth about the cargo were moved uh, on uh, to one of her buildings. That was a very tidy operation. I had thought it would take at least half a day. To put it delicately, we had someone with special abilities handling this. A3 best girl! Then again, though we prevented any harm from coming to the hostages, we lost the cargo. Nothing for it, I suppose. Who would have expected an entire hijacking to cover up the theft of some cargo? I must apologize to you as well. I was the closest at hand when it happened. No, you did more than enough. It's thanks to your sharp eyes that we're able to track the suspicious vehicle now. I'm impressed that you realized in all the chaos that the cargo was the true target. You even spotted their getaway truck. Thank you. Our next step should be to interrogate the suspects in custody and... Sadly, it won't be that simple. I haven't heard much yet, but it seems they're having unexpected difficulties with the interrogation. It will take some time. Hmm. If they were prepared to risk their lives for this operation, I suppose they won't break so easily. We made an error in judgment. We were too focused on preventing the item itself from doing any damage. But since they targeted something so unusual, that should narrow down the suspect pool. I can't deny it's possible that someone connected to the Kirijo group is behind this. Thank you for your assistance, Shiragane. I'm sorry to have involved you in this mess, but the professionals will take it from here. This is kind of funny because uh, they're rather on level with each other, <laughs> which kind of works you know, because I think they're uh, I think they're the two you know, um, the two girls in their res uh, respective persona games who you know, are um, who are most effective by who are most effective uh, um, who are most related to intelligence. Professionals, in other words, uh, 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 professionals, in other words, she plans to investigate this herself uh, as a shadow operative. But uh, by that, I mean, uh, like, in order to advance their respective, um, their respective uh, social links, you need to uh, keep the, uh, um, you, you need to keep upgrading your intelligence to certain, and, um, to certain milestones. Does that mean my work here is done? 
I'm afraid so. We do value your cooperation. This is a bit of a pickle. The Carijo group and the police want to keep this under wraps. That is, they don't they cannot open a public investigation. On top of that, the shadow operatives are technically an organization working for the police, so there's no room for freelancers here. Which means there's no need for me to be involved in the investigation any further. Insisting to stay on this case would only draw attention. With no other choice, I decide uh, to take my leave. It must have mean chaos at the office. Despite, uh, despite the unusual events, the man who hired uh, me with, uh, has not yet gotten in touch. I entertain the thought of returning uh, home to Inaba. But luckily enough, uh, if I brought not enough luggage for a short trip out of town, I decide to stay the night at a business, ho uh, at a business hotel near the airport and wait while my client, uh, uh, for my client to contact me. Time passes. At 9 o'clock, I finally receive a phone call from the man. Things have taken an unexpected turn. This case is under the jurisdiction of the shadow operatives now. That will make it very difficult to continue my secret investigation. But right now, you're the only one we have who's gotten that close. We heard you earned Kirijo's trust after the hijacking. We'd like you to keep up your investigation. We're currently making arrangements for you to pick it up again in a natural way. <laughs> How exactly do you pick up uh, 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 an inves investigation like that uh, 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 in, in a situation like this in a natural way? What are you going to have me do? I will not act as a spy. I'll be in touch later. Just does not answer. Just bye. <sighs> I sigh. I feel a weight in my heart. This has a high possibility of turning into a private investigation from the shadows. Pretty much a polite way of saying corporate espionage. If I'm to take this job, I need to have some sort of plan. At any rate, I cannot uh, plan uh, any uh, movements without knowing uh, how the situation is progressing. It would be far better uh, to prepare uh, for tomorrow instead of getting worked up uh, uh, with worry. I read the newspaper and watched some of the cover of today's events, then go to bed early. A day passes, and even by the night of May 2nd, the man has not contacted me again. It seems the police are, not ha are having trouble zeroing in on, on the suspicious vehicle. Considering the skill with which the crime was pulled off, I wouldn't be surprised as if that van had been dumped somewhere and the cargo loaded onto another vehicle. Going through all the possibilities is just a way to kill time. But it's the only thing I can do. Nothing happened until the sky began to darken as the sun went down. My phone finally rang. But surprisingly, the name on the screen brought a smile from to my face. Yes, Shirogane speaking. Hi, Natokun. Oh, I'm not interrupting your work, am I? No, it's quite all right. Sorry to call so late. I wanted to at least give it one more shot about tomorrow. That's right. So much has been uh, happening that I completely forgot the school holidays start uh, start tomorrow. And of course, we're supposed to have our uh, reunion with Yusu uh, Senpai when he visits uh, from the city tomorrow. I was supposed to be able to meet up with them. I didn't imagine that I'd uh, be stuck here for three days thanks to uh, the attempted hijacking at the airport. But since I've undertaken the job, I have, obliga uh, I have obligations that I can't just abandon. I'm starting to actually feel some anger towards uh, whoever the culprits are. Sorry. But it seems I still won't be able to make it. I'm actually not in Inaba at the moment, to be honest. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that. Oh, then I guess you can't check even if it rains. Even if it rains? Oh, nothing. Just talking to myself. Hmm? What was that? Hey, okay, Nautikun, I know there are people who'll be in trouble without you. You need to stay there and help them out. Yes, well... Help, that out, help them out, huh? 
it irritates me to know that I'm going uh, to do this pretty much. Uh, what? Uh, uh, it irritates me to know that what I'm uh, going to do is pretty much spy work. It really is a shame. Give my regards to Senpai and the others, won't you? Will do. Good luck with the job. I hung up the phone. Seeing my dear Senpai again. I feel that's much more important than a job uh, with an uncertain outcome, and I feel a little sad that I'm going to miss it. Maybe I should just uh, turn the case down and make, make a surprise visit tomorrow. I if any train would make it in time. But it looks like the case is not about to let me leave. After my talk with Chae-san, I began to prepare for bed. And that's when the public safety official called me again. It seems we may be back on for the secret investigation. Mitsuru Kirijo just requested our cooperation. We agreed. A detective by the name of Kurosawa will be heading out tomorrow. We want you to accompany him to the rendezvous point. And anyone not familiar with B3, Kurosawa was the police officer who, you know, um, uh, who actually functioned as a weapon shop in Persona 3. When I asked about uh, this Kurosawa fellow, I received an, un an anticipated answer. Uh, uh, Apparently, he had uh, helped uh, Kurijo san's activities on his, uh, his own while he was a constable. Even though his superiors didn't understand what Kurijo san was up to, he followed his own instincts and helped her protect his town. Normally, he would uh, be punished for this, but the situation took a 180 degree turn thanks to, uh, thanks to the establishment of the shadow operatives. His knowledge uh, has been invaluable, uh, and rather uh, than being uh, disciplined, and he has been promoted uh, to Plains Cloth, uh, to Plains Clothes Detective. Kurosawa is willing to leak you whatever info he learns about the Kirijo group through his cooperation with them. I'm surprised he agreed to that. Hasn't he assisted Kirijo-san and her group in the past? I'm afraid that's something you'll have to ask him about, although he seems to have his own agenda. I confirmed several other details before ending the call. Detective Kurosawa. If he's working with the Kurijo group, it could be something of a problem. But if they have information to leak, that means they must have located the vehicle in question. Still considering how long it took them to still considering how long it took them to find it, I may be in for a long trip. Where am I going to be sent now? I shrugged to myself. The next day, May 3rd, I meet with Detective Kurosawa. I expected someone who looked shadier, but the man appeared had, had hardworking and honest. I'm Naoto Shiragane. Thank you for your assistance. I've heard rumors about you, Ace Detective. Let's get going. We make our greeting brief, and I get in, into Detective Kurosawa's car. I love how that's planes clothes. It also uh, doesn't look shady. <laughs> I mean, in all fairness, Kurosawa always looked oddly shady, but yeah, he was a very honest... Uh, uh, he was an honest-to-goodness detective. Uh, uh, he wasn't honest to, good, uh, to goodness officer, I should say. A private investigation in a location that I have no prior knowledge or experience of. This was a depressing job in the first place, and, and the addition of uh, more and more unknown uh, variables is only making me more uh, uh, displeased with it. Pretty listless. <laughs> oh no, I'm fine. Where are we headed, by the way? The place where they found the getaway car from the hijacking. A town called Inaba. It's a small place with an odd history. They just had a bizarre serial murder case there last year. Inaba? I can't stop the surprise from showing in my voice. That's your hometown, right? Isn't that why they're sending you? I'm at a loss for words, but Detective Kurosawa continues instead of uh, waiting for me to reply. The best I got from the Shadow Operatives was to assist in gathering information about those murders. They want me to meet with a supervising detective of that case and ask him for the full story. <laughs> 
Not only are they part of public safety, they're an unofficial unit. They can't come to the district police for information. Why him? Is his case related to the robbery in some way? Public safety is sharper than you might think. They do basic reviews on all cases to see if shadows were involved. Inaba is on their watch list now. And with that cargo being brought there, they naturally suspect a connection between the cases. Hmm. If there is a connection, then it might be related to our case. I begin to have ominous thoughts and my expression darkens. But Detective Kurosawa doesn't probe into, the into that topic. Perhaps he's the type of person who doesn't judge people based on evidence, but gets a feel for them um, through conversation and actions. How, I'm, uh, how am I reflected in his eyes? I can't help but wonder. Detective Kurosawa goes inside the Inaba police station while I wait need it's in the car near the junkyard. The familiar sight of Inaba seems strange somehow. The detective in charge of the uh, this case must be uh, none other uh, than Dojima-san. Detective Ryotaro G uh, D uh, Dojima. Of course I'm familiar with him. And not just through our profession. Dojima-san acted as Yusenpai's uh, guardian while he stayed in Inaba. I feel like I'm betraying him as well, and can't stop myself uh, from sighing again. Soon enough, Detective Kurosawa uh, steps, uh, uh, steps out of the uh, station. I thought he was coming back. But halfway to the car, he turns and walks into the junkyard. I wonder what he's doing. I stick my head out the window and try to track him. There's another park, uh, car bo uh, parked behind a pile of junk. That distinctive grill style. That's Kurito-san's limousine. I hurriedly pull my head back into the car. That's right, Detective Kurosawa came here to cooperate with Kurito-san. But still, to bring me along and park so close to her is... Then again, it's very unnatural uh, to, park, uh, far from the, uh, uh, to park far from a rendezvous point. Excuse me, Detective Kurosawa made, uh, made the right decision. I calm down and slide into the, near, uh, into the rear seat, keeping my, excuse me, keeping my head low. Still, Kurito-san uses uh, that black uh, limousine while undertaking her shadow op uh, operative's duties as well. That car sticks out like a sore thumb here in Inaba. Heck, it's distinctive everywhere, anywhere in Japan. Why would anyone and it's clear? Uh, why would someone as clever as Kurito uh, on take that car uh, on a special mission like this? Does she have some profound reasoning behind it? <laughs> nope. After a while, Detective Kuri uh, uh, Kurosawa finally comes back to the car. Son, may I ask you something? Why are you working with public safety? <laughs> You're asking that now. I thought that would be your very first question. After wiping, uh, after wiping a dry smile from his face, Detective Kurosawa turns to me with an incredibly serious expression. Spy on Mitsuru Kirijo and her shadow operatives to your heart's content and never find anything suspicious. But for that to be understood, at some point or another, everything she does has to be investigated to eliminate those doubts. In which case, it's better someone like you do the investigating than someone official who will never understand. That's all there is to it. So he does have his reasons after all. For your cooperation. I'll leave the rest in your hands. I exit the vehicle. Kurosawa son uh, takes his car uh, onto the highway and speeds out of sight. He has no doubts whatsoever regarding Kurijo son's activities. To be honest, I'm inclined to agree with him. But I can't jump to conclusions without any evidence. <laughs> I use uh, heaps of junk to cover uh, uh, as cover to sneak uh, close to the limousine and watch. Not long after, I see two people exit the vehicle. One of them is Kurijo-san. The other, unlike, uh, however, unlike uh, when I saw her at the airport, she's wearing uh, equipment likely suited for combat. The other person looks strange. Is that the fabled humanoid weapon? P3 best girl. 
there was information about uh, the about a humanoid weapon mixed in uh, with all the data uh, I uh, had uh, I had about the Kirito group. When I first uh, saw it, I was confused. But that had to be what was standing uh, in front of me. It seems natural, almost lifelike, uh, but there's no doubt. Uh, but there's no denying that it's an artificial construct. It seems that the rumor uh, of, of, uh, of an unorthodox anti-shadow uh, uh, unit were due uh, were true. Another man comes to join them soon. He too was dressed in outlandish attire. He was shirtless and wore uh, a red cloak like uh, a desert nomad. The perfect example of someone who ought uh, to be detained for questioning. I compare his face to the list of pictures of people involved in the situation. While his taste in clothing has changed, I believe that, is, uh, uh, that uh, uh, this man is Akihiko Sonata. I can't imagine uh, what would uh, possess him to go around dressed like uh, to go about dressed like that. But I speculate about their actions. I was. Uh, what business do they have here in a junkyard? They're shopping for the greatest deals, of course. Like, look at that. They're clearly shopping for a black screen, uh, for a flat screen TV. There's nothing here uh, 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 but a pile of broken household uh, electronic, uh, electronics and abandoned televisions. Then it hits me. Detective Kurosara had told Kurijo san about last year's incident. And of course, uh, she has prior knowledge of personas and shadows. Then no doubt she's heard of uh, the idea uh, uh, of entering the TV world. After all, it appeared uh, as many times in the testimony of the killer from last year. Dojima-san may, may have, have disregarded it uh, for uh, being, being too far-fetched, but Detective Kurosawa must have caught on. I take a closer look. There's a mountain of old television sets. The vic uh, victims of last year uh, uh, switched to digital. Victims of last year switched uh, to digital broadcast. Planning to enter a TV from here, are they? Even as I say that, the mechanical girl already has her hand sticking into a TV screen. It's exactly as I thought. The mere fact that they are testing what uh, they heard so recently cannot bode well. Uncertainty crosses my mind. The three of them, them are clearly preparing to enter the television. Should I blow my cover and warn them um, about what they're doing? If they enter, they may not, they may not be able to leave. But the other uh, world should uh, no longer be dangerous anymore. And I heard from Yosuke-senpai that he asked Teddy to leave uh, the exit uh, TV out just in case. If they're Persona users, they should be able to handle the shadows. They, wouldn't, uh, they shouldn't be in peril, but... Kurijo-san made a decision faster than I could. The other members will wait here in the car. Yeah. If we all barge in and something happens, we'll be devastated. Now that you mention it, at least one of us should be staying behind as well. I am not staying. P3 best girl. <laughs> us three will be plenty. We'll end this in a flash. No problem. <laughs> The same as always. Although, huh? we have no idea what might be waiting for us on the other side. Don't get careless. Right. This situation, it brings back memories. <laughs> Ready! Why enter the TV? 
What's going on? I stand there blankly. The stolen cargo inside the TV? Should I chase after them? If I turn back here, we may never be able to find man, the three of them again. And if that happens, the truth about the case will be lost forever. If a property was uh, placed into the TV world, it means uh, that whoever stole it uh, knows the truth about last year's events. And if that's the case, I can't ignore this, no matter what my uh, assigned task is. Plus, if they're determined to enter the TV despite not knowing the risks, I can hardly allow cowardice to prevent me from following. I realize that uh, the, uh, the straw breaking the camel's back is not logic, but my, pr uh, uh, but my pride. I smiled at myself, but my mind was made up. I stand up, look around, and then uh, step inside the same television they used. Okay, before we resume, I am going to quickly take a bio uh, break. Give me a sec, everyone. All right, I'm back. I also took off my, my jacket. It was getting kind of warm in my room. It's been a while since I felt this falling sensation. But this time, the sensation seems to continue longer uh, than it did when I they would enter a TV as part of the investigation team. Before I they know it, the falling has ended. I take cover behind and a pillar and, and look around for uh, the three shadow operatives. Did I lose them? We all entered from the same television, so we should have, have arrived in the same place. I relax a little and, and take a look around. When I stand up, I notice it. it it's difficult to believe. I take a good hard look. This is a school. How many people have landed up uh, uh, in the at the front gates? <laughs> and not only that, but... Sokami High School? What's going on? This is the gate uh, to the school I attend. The, fami uh, the, uh, bleh, the familiar school building is inside. But there is something unfamiliar uh, out, out in front. There's a stack of strange monitors. They're all displaying the words P1 Grand Prix. This place looks like you know, the real world, but there's uh, something warped about it. It feels like the world is dangerous again, like it uh, was while we were investigating the incident. But this world has returned uh, to the way it was before. While I'm thinking this, uh, students come walking out of the building. They gather together, and soon the area is filled with people. Impossible. How could there be this many people in the TV world? Suddenly, the students surround me and start cheering. It's all too familiar. Uh, I see an all too familiar burst of static uh, play across the monitors. A new legend is about to start! Be the manliest of all men! Come on down! Nobody touches his precious Nanako! The sister complex kingpin of steel, you Narukami! It's only natural. Wage slave in the boonies by day, hero by night, Captain Rasantamo, Yosuke Hanamura! Everything that bores me has got to go! A spunky dragon with deadly legs. The carnivore who's discarded womanhood, Shie Satunaka! You need to eat more meat! Please escort me to the ring, my friends. The unconquerable Snow Black, Yukiko Amagi! I'll finish you in one strike! Blooming roses and bulging muzzles, the blood-curdling beefcake emperor, Kanji Tatsumi! Deep into realms of romance, the body of a child, the brain of a genius, the 2000 IQ killjoy detective, Naoto Shirogane! Is this an army of idiots? Mm -hmm. Fight! And 
survive towards the one throne waiting at the end. The P1 Grand Prix, where fierce fights will be fought. The battle begins tonight. What? <laughs> Killjoy Detective? The shock leaves me down uh, dumbfounded for a while. Plus you, Senpai, Sister Complex Kingpin? Well, it's true that... No, no, no calm down, Aoto. <laughs> calm down and analyze the situation. This otherworldly program where uh, real people's uh, foibles uh, are exaggerated into unworldly proportions. The static before the video made it very clear. This broadcast uh, could only be near the Midnight Channel. And what was the, the fighting tournament about? The members of the investigation team are the combatants. That Teddy was acting as the host for this. All of, the, uh, the, uh, all of us should know that Senpai is coming back to Inaba during uh, Golden Week. Uh, all of us know that uh, Senpai is coming back uh, to Inaba uh, during Golden Week. Then could this be some kind of way to welcome him back? No, no, no. Calling him a sister complex kingpin? That's not a welcome, that's a challenge. Who would, publi uh, who would publicize a, a negative nickname like that? Besides, whatever the reason, I can't imagine that someone uh, would seriously want uh, uh, to uh, us all to fight each other. What is going on? Does it mean that the rest of them um, are in, in the TV world as well? Without warning, the sound of a... Uh, uh, the sound of microphone and feedback, uh, feedback pieces my, uh, pierces my ears. Pierce mine too. Ow! Hello, boys and girls of Yasogami. Sorry for the wait. That voice. That's Rise-san. The students go wild. My voice broke. Sorry. The monitors. Teddy appear. Uh, the, on the monitors, Teddy appears to be wearing some sort of costume. It looks like Risei-san and Teddy they are the ones running this. Do they really plan on holding this P1 Grand Prix? And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the challenger in our first battle. If that promotional video is correct, then the members of the investigation uh, and uh, then are the members of the investigation team going uh, uh, then are the members of the investigation team going to show up? Just as I learn, uh, as I lean forward to see what uh, is going on, a spotlight shines directly into my face, blinding me. What? The students around me raise their fists to the air and shout. This is a pickle. It seems that I won't be able to chase his Kirijo uh, on down at this rate. The fir uh, uh, first the plane hijacking and now another unforeseen interruption. What is the meaning of this? <laughs> Didn't you watch the intro video? It's a fighting tournament. I gathered as much, but I was asking why you would do such a thing. Pitting friend against friend in battle is going too far for a joke. It's not a joke, though. I'm giving this 100%, just like I always do. Now get out there, now, Chan. Show me everything you've got. You're not making any sense. <laughs> Besides, there's... While I'm speaking, I see the area in front of me twist. I close my eyes at once. When I open them, I see only a certain. Uh, I see that only certain things around me have been warped uh, by whatever that was. The scene on the monitors, the students around me. I blink and rub my eyes, but soon realize that my eyes aren't playing tricks on me. Are these students an illusion someone is creating? With their skin hands missing, the student hands have, have become dark shapes that only resemble a human form. Are these shadows of some sort? Well, I do find it hard to believe uh, that so many people all uh, could have wandered into the TV world. Even if the, uh, this many people did get in, in here, 
the town uh, would be in a, an uproar over the mass disappearance of so many students. It makes more sense for them um, to be shadows, but if that, uh, excuse me, but if that's the case, why uh, did I see them as students? Could it be? Teddy and Rise both uh, have the power to interfere uh, with other people's thoughts to a certain extent. It may be possible for them uh, to be projecting illusions into my mind. But that would prove that the two of them really are the hosts of this show. I decide not to jump to any conclusions for now. Even if the two of uh, them are behind this, why would they hold a tournament and deceive me with illusions? I won't be able to figure out anything until I determine what their objective is. As I'm considering my next course of action, Teddy, or should I say General Teddy, speaks directly to me. This is getting me nowhere. Talking to him isn't helping me figure out what's going on here. Let's get this started. Bring out the first opponent. Another spotlight appears to, uh, is across from me. A person uh, steps out of the darkness and... It's been a while, Naoto. Senpai? Why are you here? I promised I'd come back during Golden Week. Don't tell me you forgot. No, of course I remembered. It's just, I didn't expect to see you here. I could say the same thing. I heard you couldn't make it because of your job. E yes, actually I'm here on matters related to my work. It came as a surprise to me as well. Huh, looks like you're as uninterested in socializing as always. Huh? What did he just say? Everyone says that though they think of you as a friend, they never get the same vibe from you. Th that's not true. I just happen to be busy with a case. But really, now's not... Work, work, work. I guess work's all you care about in the end. Even now. I'd say you're more concerned with your work than us. Uh, I get it. Hanging out with people outside work is a burden for you. It's like an invasion of your privacy. Senpai? He's not the type of person to, uh, to speak so poorly of others, is he? Is this an illusion too? I'll help get you knocked out of the tournament so you can get back to the work you love so much. He summoned his persona. What? Are you serious? Senpai attacked me with his persona. That wasn't an illusion. It was real. If he'd hit at me, it would have been, uh, I would have been uh, seriously hurt. But now I know something. He's clearly not in his right mind right now. The leader of the investigation team I knew would never, uh, under any circumstance, harm his what friends. What this is turning into? If I must fight you, I will. Here we go! I have no idea how to play Naoto! I barely touched her! God, that was close. Jeez.
My shoulders heave as I gasp for breath. I managed to win, but Senpai was uh, as strong as ever. Naoto, are you okay? Yes. Senpai stands up and offers me his hand as I sit on the ground. Despite the fact that he was uh, hurt worse than I was, uh, the look uh, in his eye uh, shows that he is seriously worried about me. He's a completely different person than the person I uh, saw before the battle. Yes, this is the person I know. Thank goodness. Huh? I mean, are you all right too, Senpai? I'm sorry for hurting you, even though the circumstances demanded it. Oh, everything's fine here. You're back to the usual now, though, I see. The usual? What's that supposed to mean? I wonder about the use of, uh, uh, of, of his word and uh, usual, but there are more important matters at hand. Can you tell me what's going on here? Senpai tells me about what happened uh, at Inaba while I was gone. I'm at a loss for words. The, mud the Midnight Channel started to air again. The video uh, that I uh, saw was uh, the promotional video for something called uh, the P1 Grand Prix. Apparently, it, it had been shown a few times before I just saw it. Wait, that video. It was shown all over town. <laughs> no, no, now's not the time to let that sort of thing, thing discourage me. According to uh, you, Senpai, not only did the Midnight Channel make a comeback, but several of us, Kanji-kun, Teddy, uh, and, and Risei-san, have gone missing. Senpai and, uh, and the others entered uh, the TV at Junets to investigate this. I was shocked to see it looking completely different than before. Indeed. Mm. But it seems, at least in part, to be an illusion. Really? In fact, the students gathered to watch our battle were not real. Oh, yeah. They did seem like shadows, but different somehow. I didn't get the sense that they were hostile, though. I thought that Risei-san and Teddy might have been illusions, too, but both have gone missing. And given their persona abilities... I cut myself off. Tenpai shakes his head in it's response. That, that really was them. But we should have faith. If our enemy can use illusions, they might be victims as well. You're right. I can at least have more faith in my friends than that. I raise my head to look at Senpai, who is watching me. Our eyes meet and I hurriedly look away. Speaking of which, why are you here, Naoto? That's... There's the question. Well, it's only natural. I'm here now on business, not, uh, uh, not anything personal. I cannot disclose the details of my, of my investigation. Not only are there rules, but if I spoke up, I would end up getting him involved. I have to avoid that at all costs. As I'm deciding what to say... Daniel, forget I asked. I'm just happy to see you again. Me too. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's the matter now? I mean, well, about me being unsociable. Please understand that it's not because my work is more important than my friends. Huh? I've never thought that about you at all. I don't think any of us have. Senpai. Alrighty, time to break up your little chat. T Teddy? Now John wins! Very impressive beating up the almighty sensei. But now it's time for you to go on. Your next opponent's already waiting. When the speech is over, the monitor shuts off. Next opponent, huh? I'd rather not continue the charade, but I have to push forward in, in order to get uh, out a hold of the situation. We should get going. You Senpai uh, nods uh, reassuringly. I feel a sense of relief welling within me. I can't let my guard down, knowing that Senpai is with me uh, uh, to help uh, me face whatever light is ahead. I know I have... Uh, I can't let my guard down, uh, down, but knowing that Senpai is, is with me uh, to help me face whatever lies ahead, I know I have nothing to fear. Or so I thought. Senpai was walking next to me when uh, and he suddenly stopped. An invisible wall? What is this? And how come you can pass through? <laughs> Curse! You gained the numbers! How many times have I made that joke? A wall? There's nothing there. 
I waved my hand through the plate, and it's where uh, Senpai said he couldn't pass through, but I don't feel anything. But Senpai doesn't look like uh, he's faking it. The monitor uh, turns on again. Teddy's face fills the screen. Huh? Did I forget to tell you? Only the winner can move on to the next fight. No one's getting out of this school until a champion's been crowned. Only the one who fights to the very end and comes out on top can leave. So neither opponent can leave the area unless they fight each other. You go on ahead, Naoto. I'll try and find a way to catch up. Very well. Be careful, Senpai. I will. See you later. I'm hesitant to leave Senpai behind, but it can't be helped. I'd like uh, to try and, uh, and uh, destroy the wall, but there's nothing I can do if I can't touch it. With Senpai smiling at me, I decide to go on ahead. It looks like no matter how many people I fight, I'll have to progress uh, by myself. After some time uh, walking, I smack into something, even though there's nothing there. I didn't understand what was going on at first, but I soon come um, to realize something. So this is one of those invisible walls Senpai was talking about. It seems that, that some of them won't allow anyone to pass, no matter who wins the fights. It's completely transparent. The only way uh, to know uh, that it's there is, uh, is, the, uh, is to feel well, its glass-like smoothness. I have no choice but, uh, to, make, uh, but to take a detour. But time after time, these walls kept, uh, kept getting in my way. I'm not choosing my path. I'm being herded. I suppose I'm following some plan laid out by whoever set this up. After I opened the door to the gym, I saw a, play, uh, a space clear uh, uh, the way for that. As I expected, General Teddy appears on the monitor. But I don't intend to fight my friends. Alrighty, let's do this. Bring out the next opponent. Yo, yo, yo! How's it hanging now, doll? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> that is the most cringe Kanji introduction. Kanji kun. Well, he certainly looks like Hanji Kun, but it only looks that way. The way you talk is so lame. Oh my god! Huh? I thought I was ready to face anyone, but this isn't the, uh, the matter of being in the right mind or not. In my right mind or not? Is this an illusion? Oh please, let this be one. It might be an illusion. Like way too uptight and goody goody. Makes you sound so distant. You dig? <laughs> so cringe. Is that so? <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm talking about. You could have just said, Oh, you think so? You, you think so? Ah, now you're getting it. Now I feel like I'm on your wavelength. <laughs> oh my god. Thanks. And again, relatability aside, I feel like you were miles away from me to begin with. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it again. What's with the Miss Manners Act? I'm sorry. It's a habit of mine. Or maybe it's that you don't care about getting close to us, huh? You don't feel like you gotta bother getting to know us and stuff? Of course I don't think. Hell no, man. <laughs> oh my god. You never warm up to anyone because you set your standards so goddamn high. Oh dear, he's shown his true self. Is it you know what? Are you putting on a show of not letting anyone near you because you got no confidence in yourself? Is that it? Kanji kun. They may be false accusations, but some, some of those statements are hitting home. I can't brush off these, these words, and my, my heart aches. I'm so nervous. Your height? Your body? That girly voice? <laughs> Let me give you a little lesson in manliness. I hope you're ready for the pain. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> this is insanity. I didn't say any... Ugh.
But let's see how this goes, considering the first fight went so swimmingly. And I certainly didn't almost lose it, yep. That was not what I wanted to do. Oh well, that went better. Marginally. Kanji-kun, are you alright? Of course I am. Your attacks are like little bug bites. I just let my guard down, that's all. <laughs> I don't know if he's acting tough or trying to be courteous uh, as me, but at least he's back on uh, to his the, uh, to the usual kanji kun. The usual kanji kun. Usual. Wait, didn't you uh, senpai say that too? Well, at the very least, the scene ends that the spell null is broken when uh, it's the battle ends. I let out a sigh of relief. Still, for uh, uh, for some reason, uh, kanji kun has yet to look this way. Really okay? Yeah. I was told that the others lost contact with you, so how did you come to be here? How? Well, I, uh, it was a change of pace? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly didn't sleepwalk into the TV. Nope, no sorry. You came into the TV for a change of pace? <laughs> did something happen? I'm willing to listen if you'd like to talk about it. <laughs> talk about it. I mean, wait, not, not, not that I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's, it's not that I do want to talk or that I don't want to. Anyways, there's just sometimes a man wants to go inside a TV by himself. <laughs> He's adorable, isn't he? I'm not sure I follow. Off my back, will you? I didn't come in here because I like it. I actually, no. That is why I came. Because I like this place. <laughs> <laughs> when Kanji Kun turns around, his face is red. But with anger, uh, uh, but with anger or something else. Something else entirely. I just don't understand why you're being so loud about it and blushing so fiercely. <laughs> it wasn't blushing. Besides, it was all your fault. You're the one that was, uh, well, being all. You no. Know? What are you talking about? You want me to come out and say it? Jeez. I thought you'd gone crazy because of that. Me? Crazy? You were the one who was acting oddly, calling me. Now doll and whatnot. Now doll? I'm gonna call you that. <laughs> Even he realizes that that's too cringe. Wait a second. Acting strangely. <clears throat> I saw Kanji Kun as if he had gone mad, and he and he saw me as the same. And yet both of us claimed that we hadn't gone crazy. I get it now. That's why you so uh, senpai called me the usual Naota. Of course. An illusion. Huh? I believe we were both under the illusion that the other had lost their mind. That's why neither of us remembers saying what the other heard. Illusions, huh? It must be a scheme to make friends fight each other. But if that's the case... It's not as simple as, as the person I have to fight being crazy. You Senpai, you senpai and Kanji-kun both said things that dig you know, deep into my personal problems. If these are illusions, they, uh, then whoever is creating them has to be someone who knows us. The ability to interfere with other senses, the prior knowledge of us, putting it all together, it must be. Must be what? The Teddy acting as the tournament's host, as well as Rise-san. 
Must be genuine. You moron, there's no way it's them. I look at Pakanji Kun in surprise. Ted and Risa are fakes. Come on. We're not twisted like that. You call <laughs> people out of know. He can tell by the hair. <laughs> he doesn't uh, have any proof. But his unshakable trust uh, 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 sets me at ease. He has proof. He can tell the difference between uh, their hairs. Even if I told them um, and re uh, uh, that Risa and Teddy were both uh, are both missing, I'm sure his answer wouldn't change. Well, you know, there is someone here besides us. I saw her on my way here. Some girl with long hair. A girl? Did she happen to be wearing a white fur shawl and combat gear beneath it? Fur? What are you talking about? She had on a normal Yasuo girl's uniform and her hair was like tied back. A female student with tied back hair? <laughs> I don't recall anyone like that. I thought he might then have run into Grigio-san, but that doesn't appear to have been the case. Is that girl Kanji uh, 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 is that girl Kanji Kun uh, is talking about not uh, a, uh, a suspect? I can't tell for sure. Never mind. Well, I should be moving on. Hold on, I'll come with. Wait, what the hell? Ah, the invisible walls again. Just like last time, I can't touch it myself. Seem to dictate that only the victor can proceed. I'll come for you later. <sighs> Don't bother. I'll figure this out myself somehow. That aside, you beat me. You better make sure you're the champion in the end. <laughs> He'll just punch down the invisible wall. Well, don't worry about it, everyone. That's completely irrelevant to the larger objective. I'll leave Kanji Kun behind and push uh, Sean ahead. We're being shown illusions that portray our opponents as having lost their senses. But why is the host of this tournament going to such elaborate lengths? Obviously, it's to get people who know each other to fight. But is that, but is that the only goal? Still, I wonder how I had uh, appeared to Senpai and Kanji-kun. I'm not that worried about Senpai, but thinking about Kanji-kun's reaction, how he had blushed, is burning a hole in my stomach. As I walk down the hall, I come to another uh, likely location for a match. Just as I figured, Teddy appears on the screen. Your next opponent is a special guest. A lady jumping in on the fun. It'll be a big emotional reunion for you now, Chan. Could it be? Bring out the next opponent! Kirijo-san. Shiragane. Why are you here? I thought you were... This is a problem. I didn't think we'd run into each other so soon. The purpose of this event is to have the participant uh, is to have the participants fight, and because there's only one path to take, I figure we would run into each other sooner or later. I never imagined that it would uh, be this early on, though. No, there's something else I need uh, to be concerned with. Like the previous times, the opponents will not uh, be seeing each other correctly. With that in mind, I watch her closely, and, and, and as expected, I see a change in her. Bitsuru Kurijo-san's face twists into an expression of contempt, and her, her composure shatters. Maybe I'm surprised to see you here would be an understatement. I don't reply. There's no point in saying anything after all. The silent treatment. How ridiculous that you, who lives a lie, would dig up other people's hidden secrets for a living. <laughs> You seem gentle, but you maintain an aloof distance that keeps people at arm's length. I've thought that since our first meeting. At first, I thought it must be typical of a detective. But that doesn't seem to be the case. You simply lack confidence in yourself. I, I have some trouble staying silent. True nature, because you know that once you grow close to someone, you'll no longer be able to protect your pride. That's why you won't let anyone in. You use your job as a pretext to keep your distance and never get too attached. And it's from that position that you're trying to discover what others are hiding? <laughs> How contradictory. Not to mention completely ridiculous and unfair. I clench my fist in spite of myself. Kurita's relentless words. 
Even if it, uh, it's only an illusion, I began to feel it, uh, uh, that if I lose, I'll never be able to look uh, her in the eye again. I cannot lose here. I would like to answer your charges, but I see no need. There is no reason to defend myself against the accusations of an illusion. I love how uh, quickly they, um, I love how quickly Naoto is like, yeah, I'm not entertaining this crap. Got her in the corner! Taking every advantage! I was not expecting to get, you know, to get a perfect on that, I'm not gonna lie. You're stronger than you look. It seems you're a skilled fighter. And a Persona user as well, huh? With that, Kurijo-san stands up. ...clear something up. Before our battle, I may have said or done some things that seemed disrespectful, but... I understand. We were shown illusions to goad us into fighting each other. So you already knew. You are a credit to the Shiragami main, then. In that case, I'll... Well, I'm willing to forget all the things you said about my body. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Her body? <laughs> what did the illusionary me say? <laughs> Though, if you're a Persona user, that gives weight to two of my theories. Kratos on looks straight at me. Is that you were one of those who solved last year's serial murders. The few proud anonymous heroes. I shrug. And then I brace myself for the other uh, shoe to drop. I know what she's about to say. Other is that you were one of my enemies. You were an observer at the hijacking, which means a Persona user was sent specifically. Yet you hid that from me. Somehow I doubt you were there just to watch over the cargo. <sighs> if my suspicions aren't off base, then there's something I must say. In all honesty, I feel like I have no defense uh, for what uh, is going to happen next. I begin to try and find a way uh, to make it uh, through the uh, conversation without ruining, what, uh, ruining whatever goodwill I may still have with her. But Kurija san's next words take me completely by surprise. Can I ask for your cooperation once again? What? You know more about this world than I do. And since I lost our match, I will be unable to move on <clears throat> from here. Wait a moment. I thought you distrusted me. Even if I did. Is continuing to oppose each other the wisest course of action? I have no words. Kurijo san smiles as she watches me. Her proposal completely surprised me. My surprise must have confirmed that she was thinking about me. She knew that I'm not the type of person who would become her enemy under normal circumstances. That is why she smiled. I am no match for her. She's on a completely different level than I am. It's not a matter of uh, social rank. She simply has the type of personality that makes people want to follow her. Kreejo san doesn't wait for me to answer and continues. Guest, we are here in pursuit of the stolen cargo. Upon investigation, we figured out that it contained the fifth generation anti-shadow suppression weapon, Labrys. She was a machine, developed as one of a series of test models. They were intended to receive personas in order to combat shadows. Isn't a persona the manifestation of one's strength of heart? How could a machine be capable of using a persona? You're right to ask that. Labrys has a mind of her own. We don't know what she looks like, but it's probably very close to human. A humanoid machine? 
I did see something fitting that description before I came in through the TV world. So that was the weapon developed uh, by the Kirijo group. A humanoid robot, one with a heart at that. This is the fruits of the Kirijo technology, created from the research uh, of shadows. I cannot help uh, but be surprised. However, if the culprits were specifically after this Labyrinth weapon, there's a high probability that it is, uh, that it is, bleh, that it uh, has been removed from its case and is mobile. But I can't fathom how that would benefit the thieves. There is one thing I can deduce, though. Around the time of the robbery, we began to see activity in this world as well. I doubt this is a coincidence. I feel sure that your Labrys is connected to this ridiculous tournament. I agree. Before I know what I'm doing, I reach out uh, to shake hands with Kirijo-san. accept your earlier proposal. And I think I'd best hurry. Thank you. And I'm sorry. Your friends must be facing their own troubles. It's possible that they've met Labrys without knowing it, too. They'll be all right, I'm sure. The record showed that Labrys had some unknown experimental equipment. We don't know what she's capable of. Don't take her lightly. Oh, no, that isn't what I meant. She has a heart, yes? Then fighting her isn't our only option. She can be saved. I'm sure the others will reach the same conclusion. I see. When I say that, I can see a smile on her face. I can tell she believes in her friends as well. Oh, yes, I meant to ask. Have you been able to contact your friends? I shake my head. Two of them have analysis-capable personas, but both of them have gone missing. Again, it is Teddy's nose that uh, was analytical well, in Persona 4, not his persona. I actually have a few powers in that area myself. Can you tell me what these friends of yours look like? I give her as detailed description and a uh, recent it's on in Teddy as I can. A bear costume and a girl. Are they? Yes, they're the ones acting as hosts for this tournament. But they're not usually like this. I see. Well, anyway, knowing that will make searching for them easier. Let me see. Rijosan focuses and closes her eyes. Her powers must allow her to see an image uh, as she searches. It may only be a few powers, but uh, it's still quite amazing. I'm getting a match some ways from here. It's not moving either. Aha! I found her. <gasps> Can you hear me? Who is this? That voice. My name is Mitsuru Kirijo. I am with one of your friends, Shiragane. Kirijo san looks at me and nods. She is communicating to me so that Risa san can hear my voice as well. Risa san, Naoto kun, is it really you? Yes, though I could ask the same of you, Risa san. I'm so glad. This weird fake Teddy kidnapped me, and then everyone was fighting each other. And... So Risei Song's voice on the PA system was a fake. If that's the case, there's no reason uh, to believe that the image of Teddy on the monitors is the real thing either. All right, please calm down. Do you know where you are right now? It looks like an announcement room, but there are these invisible walls stopping me from leaving. Plus, the fake Teddy is watching me, so I can't use my persona. I don't know, know who that uh, fake Teddy is, but uh, it seems that Risei-san and, and the real Teddy were kidnapped uh, to deprive uh, us of a means of communication. In other words, to keep us uh, uh, fooled while we were in this world. Then again, that, that explains nothing about whatever objective could be gained by doing this to us. How does Labrys' existence tie into this? Um, thanks. Kirijo-san, right? Kirijo? I know that name. Well, it's not important, Al. Are you a Persona user, too? Yes, but we can discuss that later. I sense a shadow-like presence very close to your position. Are you all right? The only thing near here is the fake Teddy. Wait, is that what you're talking about? So it's a shadow. I was hesitant to make a decision. Kirijo-san does, uh, does not know Teddy. Of course, she wouldn't know his origins. Even if the general was uh, the real Teddy, she would probably think of him 
as a shadow if she didn't know it no better. But if General Ter Teddy is merely something else that's taking on his appearance, it leads to a completely different conclusion. That is, it's a shadow you know, from a normal human who doesn't have any tolerance for this world. If that's the case, then why is the shadow mimicking Teddy? I don't have enough pieces to begin solving this puzzle yet. I'm in the process of thinking things through. Karija san speaks up. Shiragana, you need to hurry on. I'll try to maintain communication as best I can and keep you in the loop. All right, then. I'm off. Stay safe. I nod back to her and start running. Onward. To the announcement room where Risei-san is being held. As I hurry on, and led by the invisible walls, I reach a classroom. I'll be focused, uh, I'll be forced into another uh, fight here too, no doubt. Looks like you're chugging right along! And now, another special guest for you! The gloves may be off, putting you up against this one, so I want to see your best moves out there now, Chan! Now, bring out the next opponent! I see a silhouette uh, framed in the spotlight. It's... Well, how could I forget uh, that attire? Akihiko Sanada, as I recall. Interesting. I've been gone for a while, and here I meet a stranger who knows who I am. <laughs> You're a member of Mitsuru Kirijo's organization. Her friend, actually, no? Oh, I see. So it's really Mitsuru you're interested in, ace detective. His words caused me to tense up. He just called me Ace Detective. Perhaps that was just a guess from my family name, Shiragane, but he could uh, know that. Uh, uh, but he could know that I'm spying on them um, for the police. I carefully search his eyes for anything that might tell me how much Angie knows. He looks me over from head to toe, and immediately sneers mockingly. Look at you! You have the physique of a twelve-year-old. <laughs> What? Oh my god. The detective needs a strong body more than a strong brain. All night research sessions, long stakeouts, you need stamina for that. I mean, he's not completely wrong. But look at those twiggy arms and legs of yours. <laughs> You've got an overdeveloped chest, but from the looks of it, I'd say it's all fat and no muscle. Oh my god. Seriously. What? Ah yes, gotta develop the boob muscles. What is wrong with him? What's the part? Uh, uh, what's the part of my self uh, image? Uh, that's the part of my self image I'm most sensitive about. Secret to bodybuilding. First thing, protein. Second thing, protein. Third, fourth, and fifth, more protein. <laughs> oh my god. Don't you think that's rather unbalanced? <laughs> Sonata Song flexes his muscles like a bodybuilder. You got a spar. One, two. <laughs> good, good God. He said sparring, but that punch was meant uh, to do serious damage. This is absurd. However, putting his own head chalk aside, his skill as a fighter isn't something I uh, should take lightly. Shoot, I can't dodge them all. Mitsuru? Sonata-san stopped uh, uh, suddenly as a familiar voice echoed uh, as through the room. Under the effects of an illusion. Shiragane has done nothing. Do not attack. What do you mean? He's the one who attacked me all of a sudden. <laughs> I attacked. Suddenly I remember. That's right. This is, uh, is all an illusion. I remember. Uh, I never met uh, Sonata-san before, so I don't know, know what his usual self is supposed to be. On top of that, I'm, uh, I'm allowed uh, the first. I allowed the first thing uh, he said to get under my skin. How stupid of me! I let myself get swept uh, away into the situation, and failed to realize uh, that uh, that was uh, what was really happening. Hold on a second. Oh my. Um, 
um, I let myself get swept up in the situation and fail to realize what really happened. Perspective, it was you who dealt the first blow. We were both being shown an illusion to make us fight each other. Shiragane is an excellent detective and a persona user. I told him everything. He's agreed to cooperate with us. He was originally on the scene as a police observer in this case, so we've already met. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Kreja san and I explained to Sonata uh, what was uh, what has been happening up uh, happening up uh, up until now. It's a relief to learn that despite his appearance, he's actually quite a reasonable uh, man and quick uh, to pick up uh, on things. Noise like phenomenon that fogs your senses is already gone. You should be able to communicate normally now. We reintroduce ourselves and shake hands. Like I fell for mm. the cheap trick. I'm sorry for forgetting myself too. I can't even claim to have been unaware of the deception. So you're a persona user, huh? Well, since fate already brought us together, wanna test your skills before you move on? <laughs> Sonata's on slams his fists together. Kihiko, you're doing it again. Just cooperate with him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Come on now, Toe. Let's go. Oh, wait, the tournament rules say. As Sonata Song walks away. <sighs> Ow. As I figured, he hit the wall. Right? What's the matter? What happened? I don't know. There's some kind of invisible wall here. <clears throat> the rules dictate that only the winner of each match can advance. So. He was playing. <laughs> He was, he was flustered uh, mere seconds ago, but now Sonata's on and has taken a more lively expression. So we need to have a match, even though we've got nothing against each other. We're fighting after all, then, huh? All right, then. Come at me. Please go easy on me. <laughs> I could almost, uh, uh, I could almost hear Kirijos on science in exasperation. <laughs> Like, God damn it. Final. Did Akihiko tr try to use counters on me? was a great bout. You're good. A bout? <laughs> what an annoying rule. <laughs> hmm? Wait a second. That reminds me. I saw that guy calling himself General walking with a girl. If only one person can move on, that's against the rules. The fake Teddy and Risei-san were uh, together all this time. Then could the girl he's talking about be Risei-san? No. Remember the details of what this girl looked like? Sonata san tells me about the girl he'd seen. What he said matches the description of the unknown girl Kanji Kun had uh, talked about. Which means that there's a high probability that the person seen walking with her was not uh, the general, but the real Teddy. At the very least, this, uh, this is evidence against the argument that Teddy is the general. This creates another theory, though. If the general is not really uh, uh, Teddy, then he is something else. Then he's someone else's shadow. And there's only one person that fits the bill. Well, not person per se, but. Was Lapis, <clears> then. Well, 
Is it possible we're dealing with her shadow? That's right, Labrys. If she has a, a heart capable of using a persona, then it stands to reason that she could create a shadow. In light of how the events of the last year played out, it makes perfect sense. She was able, uh, she was capable of, uh, bleh, she was kidnapped by someone uh, who knew no, her and uh, who threw her into uh, the TV world, creating a, refre a reflection of her heart. None of the data I have shows any connection between Lavras and Yasagami High. On top of which, I don't see how she'd know about you or your friends. I've been having uh, doubts about that as well. But at least I have a, uh, have a feel for what's going on. But well, Labrys' kidnappers hope to gain in from, um, the, uh, uh, from this remains unknown, however. At any rate, it wouldn't be a good idea if the shadow uh, were to run into, the, uh, into its owner. Either way, it's best if I head to the announcement room. It's much more logical to restrain the false Teddy, since, uh, since I know, know his location. And then, uh, then it would uh, uh, be, uh, then it would uh, uh, be to have uh, what? Then it would be uh, to uh, uh, to have to search. Uh, then it would be uh, to have to search uh, for uh, for Labras somewhere in this world. Wrong. Then it should be then. Still, if that uh, really is Teddy, then Lab. Uh, 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 if that really is Teddy with Labrys, why are they traveling together? What's that Teddy doing? I'm sorry I can't help much, Kirijo-san. You'll have to forgive me for my meager skills as well. My persona's communication powers are more for operational assistance. A friend of mine from school was much stronger than myself in that respect, but... Oh no, it's all that stupid bear's fault anyway. <laughs> He's a real genius for making people worry. <laughs> Man, it's strange running into so many Persona users I've never heard of all at once. <laughs> I gotta say, it brings back memories. For us, too. We were as surprised as you. Not to say that the possibility of other Persona users hadn't crossed our minds, but to actually meet them. What you said about a friend from school kind of reminds me of us, too. What was school like for you? I'd like to hear about it. Technically, you've been there. I met one of the best teachers. Well, ignoring Akihiko's current appearance, he was a boxing champion in his student days. Hey, that dig was uncalled for. <laughs> After that, I don't know what went through his brain, but he started saying he wanted to search for stronger opponents. <laughs> he went on a journey to hone his skills? I thought that only happened in comics and old samurai films. <laughs> thought I had to do it, so I did it. That's all. This peaceful moment was shattered by Kirijo San's voice. Wait, what's this I'm sensing? It's like a shadow, but bigger. Another shadow presence? And it isn't the fake Teddy? Huh? What's going on? That fake Teddy left the announcement room. Risei San uh, made a report immediately after that. Sonata San and I look at each other. It seems like the situation is changing. Sonata-san nods to me, and after uh, taking a small bow, I run off. With no one watching over her anymore, Rize-san was able to summon her persona. The job of providing support moved uh, from Kurijo-san, who, uh, who not all of us knew, to Rize-san. Rize-san uh, contacted the rest of us and let us talk to each other for a moment. are here too. We'll rescue you in no time. Wait, why is Naoto here? I can't help but smile well at uh, this as I tell them um, um, about the others I've seen and uh, I have seen so far. It seems we're all uh, safe for now. And now that we can communicate, uh, we've greatly increased our awareness of the situation and our ability to share information. The general must have known that uh, leaving Risei alone would result in this. If he did know, no, but left her anyway, there must have been uh, something major happening. Either that, or he no longer has, has any reason to hide. I hurry on while, no, we, uh, while we share what we know. The actual design of this place may differ uh, from the real uh, Yasagami High School, but uh, the general layout not appears to be the same. 
So if I climb in the stairs and turn in the corner, the, uh, the announcement room should be right there. However, Risei-chan calls out a warning before I uh, can get there. The fact that Risei's communication didn't get cut off when and General Teddy reappeared is somewhat worrisome. But then again, General Teddy doesn't have uh, the time to bother watching Risei-san. After all, if the, if the real uh, Teddy and Labrys are both right uh, there as well, he has more important things to be concerned with. This confirms that General, Ted, uh, uh, that General Teddy is a fake. It's only natural, then, to assume that, that he is Labrys' shadow in disguise. But that makes things dangerous. Labrys and her shadow are, are confronting each other. Rizé-san uh, should know the dangers of the situation, but she doesn't uh, know Labrys. She might not realize uh, what the relationship uh, is, is between the girl and the shadow. I have to warn her. But before I can speak, it happened. The static gets worse. Risei-san! I can't communicate with her when uh, she's so close. There's something happening in the announcement room. I run as fast as I can towards it. As I reach the door, I hear a loud uh, scream from inside. As I reach the door, no, I hear the... Uh, bleh. I slam um, the door uh, open without a second thought and uh, prepare for a fight. But the attack uh, came from an unexpected assailant. Of anyone uh, in that room, I wouldn't have thought it'd be... Risei-san! Look out! Oh. I see something glimmer in front of me. Attacking purely on instinct... Uh, acting purely on instinct, I, and I duck instantly. A low whizzing sound passes above my head. What was that? Did something uh, get thrown my way? Risei-san turns towards me. I look at her uh, from uh, across the room. She's crouched next to something on the ground. On closer inspection, uh, and the red and one, uh, 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 the red and white lump she's near is Teddy. I see General Teddy in the back of the room. So the one with uh, Risei-san has to be the real one. A girl is standing between uh, Teddy and the General. I've never seen her before, but looking at her, her mechanical body, I can tell who she is. That's Labrys. What should we do? That girl wasn't normal. She wasn't even human. I know it sounds hard to believe, but she's a robot or something. She defeated Teddy and, um... Again, I take offense. Look at me. Calm down. Are you talking about Labrys? Also, normal's overrated. Though Risei-san uh, is, is quite shaken, she You're still really nods. Solved, ben. You're not the real Teddy. You're only a shadow taking his form. The shadow of Labrys here, to be precise. Aha! No wonder they call you the Detective Prince now, Chan. You cracked the case! But even if you figured it out, there's still nothing you can do. I carefully watch, uh, the, uh, watch General Tenny, uh, Teddy as he scoffs. Whatever it was he threw at me, it was too uh, busy. Uh, I was too busy dodging uh, to see it clearly, but it must be dangerous. I'm sure uh, uh, he won't uh, hurt his owner until uh, he hears a certain phrase from her, but uh, he has no reason uh, to be gentle with the rest of us. I point my gun at, at him, ready for any more uh, of his attacks. However, the next attack comes from a direction I had not been expecting. There's a droning sound, and it's coming from um, a giant axe flying at me. The axe is bigger than I am, spinning uh, through the air towards me. Like a boomerang, it curves back uh, and, and returns to the hands of its wielder. There are thrusters behind uh, the blade, uh, allowing the axe uh, to fly as it spins. It wasn't General Teddy attacking me. It was Labrys. Not the shadow, but the real one. What's going on? And wait, wait, did she attack me the first time too? 
That would explain why Rize san is so shaken up. But the shadow right uh, but the shadow's right in front of her. Why is she going after me? I'm human. This is all just a bad dream. Mm. I gotta destroy everything. I'm human. I can't find. Excuse me. I can't find any meaning in what she's saying. I want to convince her to stop, but I can't come up with the right words to do so. Labrys takes a fighting stance without wasting a moment. It looks like the only way to bring Labrys back to normal is to fight her. Please stay back. I never really expected to be able to convince her in the first place, but with the shadow here. I bite the bullet. I will stop her, no matter what. Finally. Nope. that well. Aw, she beat you fair and square. You really are useless, Labby-chan. After Labrys collapses, the shadow looks at, at her or as if uh, she was trash. The reason for being is to fight. And you can't even do that. You're not worth a damn. You don't need to exist anymore. The shadow's voice and speech pattern begin to slip away from its impersonation of Teddy. No, that's not all. The fake Teddy's appearance begins to warp as well. Finally, the time has come for it to reveal its true self. I think maybe after the setup for the next fight, I should end stream. <laughs> like I'm not really the um, uh, I'm not really the um, uh, under a strict time limit uh, considering thing, um, considering the schedule for tomorrow, but that uh, um, <clears throat> uh, but uh, it's. Uh, this is much later than I really like to go with uh, my streams, you know? The form uh, that it takes is, as I thought, Labrys. The true self. That's... my face. Oh. You, you don't, don't want, want to remember? remember? Fine. You, you can, can die, die like that. that. <gasps> what? She's attacking her, uh, her owner now? Is that a threat to pressure her? No, this is sh this is a shadow we're dealing with after all. There is no knowing what it will do. It. What's this? Why are you protecting her? It's her fault you all had to fight each other, you know. With that, she turns uh, to her other self and looks down uh, uh, at her with disdain in her eyes. 
experience which you have to go through. Right? That's why we're in a school having a fighting tournament. That ain't! My home was a horrible place. They made us fight and kill each other just to collect combat data. It's so much, but no one understands. How can I make them see? I know. I'll force friends to fight each other. Maybe then they'll understand. No. I want to make them understand. That ain't true. That's not what I want. Oh, yeah? Then let me take over from here. I'll destroy everyone who pretends to understand. Just like you did before. Stop! I've had enough! Labrys! No! You're not me! No! <laughs> you said it! You finally said it! The power. I can feel it building! Like, is it just me, or did that feel like kind of an unnatural way to segue into that? A sinister aura surges from the shadow. Even the surrounding things begin to warp with its energy. Yes, the power! <laughs> the morb! In an instant, the area begin, uh, inst uh, the area becomes dominated by a piercing red light. The view from beyond the window has changed completely. I hear Rise is on grass behind me, uh, gas behind me. I don't know what uh, this place uh, is modeled after, but I get the sense that someone carved uh, open uh, a living creature's stomach. This is a reflection of Lavis's heart, the suffering she carries. The shadow's golden eyes stand out uh, more in, uh, in the dusky redness, fo uh, uh, focusing on me. I change my mindset. There is only one thing to do here, just as my friends did for me. Son, you watch Labrys and Teddy. I got him. Good luck, Natokun. Yes, I'll save her. Nope. I am just not giving her a chance to use Asteria. How did I do that? How? Is Naoto... Uh, am I wrong in thinking Naoto is a zoner and she's a pressure character all this time? The giant creature behind the shadow... No. 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 I had begun to think it was a part of the shadow itself. Uh, vanishes with a loud roar. I managed to defeat her. She shows no further signs of resistance. Curiously, I turn around and then walk to Labrys, who still uh, who's, you know, was still sitting on, uh, on the floor, being held up by Rise-chan, uh, by Rise-san. It seems Teddy has also regained consciousness. He had broken uh, and into a sweat, flustering uh, as he stands next to Rise-san. Are you alright? Labrys has a melancholy look on her face uh, as she uh, hangs her head. She's so human-like. The sheer authenticity of uh, that expression makes, makes the thought appear in my mind. I have the chance to introduce myself. I'm Naoto Shiragane. You're Labrys, is that correct? She raises her head, but neither confirms nor, de nor denies it. 
She just quietly stares at her double across the room. A machine given the ability to summon a persona. The persona ability was uh, the primary objective uh, in her creation. The fact that she also developed uh, the heart came um, as a byproduct. How much suffering did she have to go through, having uh, been treated like an object for so long? It, it, it isn't easy to imagine. I can't claim to understand your pain. It was only today that I learned you existed. To say nothing of the weapons program from which you sprung. But there is one thing I do understand. I kneel and look uh, Labrys in the eyes. At me. Do I seem like a man or a woman to you? Uh, what do you mean? You and I are alike. There is such a gulf between what we yearn to be and what we are that we have trouble accepting our true nature. Our true nature? Just as I cannot break the glass ceiling of my profession, you cannot become human. That is the painful truth. But if we were able to change, would that truly bring us happiness? I feel there is something only you or I can offer because of who we really are. There's something a machine like me can offer? Even if there is something like that, there's no place I belong. That's not true. I'm not mm. human either, but I work at Juness. The part-time ladies give me sweets sometimes and everything. <laughs> That's why he works there. The heart is always lacking something. It may be that you and I will be troubled by this same thing for the rest of our lives. But please don't forget that you're not alone anymore. I'm not alone. I nod strongly to Labyrinth uh, as she looked uh, up at me. I repeat it uh, for emphasis. You're not alone. That's right. I'll stick to you like glue. Please don't. And it won't be just us. I'm sure you'll make lots of friends with everyone in town. Really? A machine like me? We nod. Labyrinth stands up and approaches her shadow. They said it's okay to be me. Doesn't that make you happy too? She takes the shadow's hand and as it droops its head listlessly. So sorry I locked you up inside me for all that time. But we'll be okay now. I'm not alone. And you're not either, right? I'm sorry I ignored you all this time. I was the one who left you all alone. <laughs> no. You are me, after all. my persona. Labrys, there are some people from the Kurijo group here looking for you. I wonder if they'll stick me back in that box again. <laughs> of course they will. After all, I caused a lot of trouble. What else are they gonna do? I can't say anything about that for certain. But you should talk with them. It's your right to be where you belong. Yeah, you're right. At that moment, I hear several sets of footsteps approaching from outside. I stand and take a fighting pose for an instant, but I relax when I hear familiar voices. I ease up and smile. All right. Whoa, Senpai! Uh, you're back from the city already? Never mind him, Kanji-kun. What about you? What have you been doing all this time? <laughs> Sleepwalking, naturally! <laughs> the shadow uh, was defeated. The invisible walls must have disappeared. 
This place is familiar to all of us. With uh, the walls gone, finding each other was a piece uh, is a piece of cake. Oh, Noto. <laughs> Guess you made the big meetup after all, huh? I swear we're tied together by fate or something. <laughs> Actually, is that the real you, Teddy? <laughs> You're so blind sometimes, Yosuke. Hey, <laughs> chan I'm so glad you're safe. Senpai, you're all here. Kratos on and, and his group comes in behind and Senpai and, and the others. The room instantly falls silent. Perhaps some of the others have, have encountered them during the match before I did, but in general, everyone and was shocked to see them. Kratos on weaves between and all of us and walks directly towards Labrys. All of us hold, hold our breath at Kratos on's dignified voice. Kirijo. You may have heard already, but I came to collect you. I collect. At that, Labrys takes a step back. I put my hand on her shoulder to comfort her. She looks at me and I nod. Human, robot, anyone, it doesn't change anything. But no matter who you are, there are things that you have to carry out uh, through your own act. Uh, uh, there are things you have to carry out through your own actions, using your own words. I don't want to go back in that box. Or to that lab. As Labras managed to say it, a voice speaks up uh, from behind Kurijo san. san I'd like to ask that you consider her request. Labras's. My sister's abilities will surely be useful to us. Please, can't we enlist her on a trial basis and see what happens? Sister. Surprised by that uh, unfamiliar uh, appellation, and uh, Labyrinth uh, looks towards the speaker. Appellation? That's a word uh, I never heard. You're a robot, too. It's nice to meet you. I'm Igis, the seventh generation anti shadow suppression weapon. I'm your successor, sister. We're sisters? She answered Labrys with a smile. Amazing. Her tone, her expressions, they're all so human. I'd like to third their request. I'm well aware that I'm in no place to make demands on you, but... Kri <laughs> Excuse me. Krijo-san gave me a wry smile after uh, the third, uh, a third objection. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like the bad guy. <laughs> There's no need to worry. I wasn't thinking of sealing you away again. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like me, this is like our, our what? I'm think uh, I'm think time going through this, but it's still, uh, but I still get emotional every time. Really? You've awakened to your persona and gained control over it. True. I don't know for sure that the danger is past. But I don't feel that you need to be sealed off from humanity. Particularly since it's obvious that you have a heart. Kirijo-san. Also, next save point, we're going to end stream. Labichan doesn't need to be all alone anywhere? <laughs> Yay! Uh, Naoto, sorry to interrupt, but who are these people? They kind of look like a bunch of freaks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, have you seen the group you hang out with? Yeah, I mean... One of them's not even human. <laughs> uh, I guess she's a robot? Huh? Wait a sec. Kirijo? As in the Kirijo group? Wait, what? What's going on here? <laughs> All my friends begin to look at uh, uh, me. The only one who uh, uh, knows everything. Uh, where should I start? More importantly, how much uh, do I, should I disclose? Either way, it looks like it's going to be a long explanation. First, though, I suggest that we change locations. It's important to share information, but it, uh, it's imperative that uh, we all get out uh, here safely. Teddy leads us to the roof. But when, uh, and the door, uh, but when he opens the door, uh, we find uh, ourselves in a place that looks nothing like uh, the real thing. Everyone besides Teddy start, uh, and, uh, starts in surprise. Outside the door, there is a space that resembles uh, a TV studio. That's right, it's the place that we used as an entrance lobby uh, to the TV world last year. Except with a lot more TVs. 
Um, it disappeared once, but it must have uh, reappeared when Labrys entered this world and created the school here. The others told me uh, that the Midnight Channel aired again. However, uh, aired again. Whoever uh, watched the broadcast must be associated with last year's airings. That explains why it looks exactly the same. At any rate, it looks like uh, we'll be able uh, to exit. Excuse me, we'll be able to exit here in one piece. As I sigh in relief, Kurijo turns to us. I introduce myself to the rest of you. I am Mitsuru Kurijo. I cannot tell you who I am affiliated with or my position, but I bear all responsibility for Labrys. This case, the whole disturbance was mainly due to us. I'm very sorry for putting you in such danger. Kurijo san sums up, up the sequence of events. Labrys's entry into the, this world was the cause of it all. He and the others came in here after her. How do you know Mitsuru-san, Naoto-kun? That's... well... Shirigani was working with us. Since it was our first time in this world, he helped us safely reach Labrys. So, the job you had was to bring Mitsuru-san and the others here? I'm um, kinda, sorta, in a way. Huh? Uh, well... That was basically it. I'm sorry, but there are some things he cannot disclose. I ask for your understanding in that regard. Sure, sure, detective stuff. I get ya. That's pretty cool. Sonata-san and Nagasan don't say a word, even after Kurijo-san's explanation. It's not completely a lie, but still. I shrug and sigh softly. And now that she sees I'm not denying any part of her less than vague explanation, I might as well no, be admitting that my investigation position uh, position uh, me against her. I really am no match for her. Well then, let's all go home. Alrighty, attention please. The trip doesn't end until we get out of the TV. Dude, you really gave us a scare. And this isn't the first time either. Uh, well, at least it ended well. You know, I understand about Rise-chan and Teddy, but why did Kanji-kun go missing again? <laughs> oh, well, because, uh... Because he fell asleep. You needed a change of pace, no? <laughs> what? Did I misspeak? You said something like, sometimes a man just wants to be alone inside a TV. <laughs> As if. I'll tell you, bastard. Why'd you have to tell him that? <laughs> Labras laughs at her small talk. Looking at her, I begin to feel uh, like this, uh, this episode uh, it wasn't so bad after all. But suddenly... Labrys' smile disappears, and her body freezes in an unnatural position. Labrys does not answer me. Sonata-san shouts a warning. Everyone jumps back, confused. Kanji kun wasn't even sure uh, uh, what, uh, that he was supposed to be uh, backing away from at first. Soon, though, we all stand and around her in a ring. Labrys stands in the center, completely motionless. I can only tell that she's probably being controlled from outside. Controlled? As we all watch uh, her, confused and nervous, Labrys' right hand slowly begins to move. It reaches around her back uh, to her thrusters, or rather to the axe. Labrys' eyes are staring blankly into space, but suddenly glances at me. The warning comes at the same um, instant as the attack. I feel a wind, and uh, I feel the wind of the axe's passage as I bend backward uh, to dodge the blow. If she'd gone after anyone else, things might not have been uh, so fortunate. I'm the only one uh, who's actually seen that attack before. But Labrys follows up with something different. I gulp in spite of myself. That white, elegant silhouette behind Labrys. I'd almost forgotten. Labrys now has the power of a, of a persona. Fighting her won't be easy as, a, uh, as easy as it was before. Why? Never mind, it can wait. Unfortunately, I kind of does have to wait. Nope.
We'll have to save the pie for, uh, for next time, like we did uh, with, um, like we did uh, with, uh, um, with Yosuke. Um, okay. Thank you all so much for watching. I know it was a long time um, coming, but we finally, they, um, but we finally finished Yosuke's story and, and are on to Naoto's. Uh, I have to admit, it is a little tiresome going through the, uh, 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 through so many similar story beats again and again. And, um, but, uh, 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 but we don't have too many characters to do the, uh, this with, like you know, just three after Naoto. Um, in any case, let us set up for the raid. Let's see, who to raid? I guess I'll raid Kuro. All right, and thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. And, um, uh, it, uh, it, uh, I'll see what, uh, what's happening in, um, uh, at, at the end of the month, because I'm going to be moving soon. So either next week is going to be the... Um, Either next week is going and to be the, the the Temple Archives where we take a look at Game Pass games, or we'll be Grand Blue, uh, or we'll be continuing RPG mode in Grand Blue uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. Uh, in any way, uh, in any case, I hope to see you uh, uh, then, and then I will see you all, all in, uh, in the next uh, stream. This is Maz Belaska signing out.